Good morning, everyone. Faisal Kamisa here with you inside the Sportsnet studio. This is becoming an annual tradition, isn't it? We are set to take you to Pittsburgh, where the Penguins are set to have their parade for their second straight Stanley Cup championship. We are going to take you to live coverage of the parade, courtesy WPXI in Pittsburgh. Enjoy. And then her third wish, a picture with Malkin, question mark. So hopefully she can get that. Now, also, uh, they have been watching on the big screens here, basically goal by goal of the whole postseason. And this place is rocking. But when those highlights come on, Joe, you saw it last year, the place just gets quiet, like the games are actually still taking place. So right now, we want to head down into the crowds. Jennifer Tomazic is out in this point crowd. Jen, what's it like out there? Catherine, it's crazy. <laughs> uh They were talking about this morning. I talked to a guy who came down here at 8 o'clock last night just to be the first person down here. And yes, we want the cup too. Uh, so let me come on over here to these ladies. Hi, what time did you guys get here? We got here at about 8.30. You got a great spot. I know, I'm really excited. Where'd you come from? Oakland area. Thank you. 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 So is there anybody here? Wiping out though was Cullen. Here's Nettie, um, obviously. There we go. A Matt Murray fan. All right, well, we'll try to see if we can hook that up for you. We're going to be checking back in with you guys throughout the parade. It is definitely going to be an exciting day. All right, we'll see if we can fix some of Jennifer's yeah, mic audio problems, issues there, but we yeah. could, you don't even need to hear it to see the excitement, Joe. No, you don't. So loud. And now we're looking at the, I believe the parade has started. It's making that left turn onto Grant right there at the beginning. Uh, and you can see all the fans just pouring out on either side of the street there. A pretty contained group and uh, a really good job of our uh, local uh, law enforcement doing a good job keeping everyone safe there yeah, today. It is the very definition of a throng. Channel 11 News anchor Lisa Silvestri live near the Pennsylvania where the parade is kicking off. Lisa, um, it's pretty exciting there, I'm sure. Oh my gosh, it is definitely exciting. We've got the North Allegheny band behind us. I'm going to let you uh, listen into a little bit of this. We're going to just take this live. But this is super exciting. The parade has just kicked off. You are listening to the North Allegheny Band. This is one of about 73 uh, bands, floats, and cars that will be taking part in today's uh, Pittsburgh Penguins Parade. In fact, there are going to be several bands from several schools, Mount Lebanon, Alderdice, Gateway, just to name a few. And of those 73 floats and entities in this parade, we are told that Sidney Crosby will be in number 70. We believe that he's going to be in a car, and he is going to have the Stanley Cup. So that's going to be all the way at the end. Uh, but you can see there is so much excitement. Last year they had about 400,000 people who came out for the parade. This year they're saying that we may actually reach about a half a million people. I had a chance, in fact, to talk to some of the fans while we were waiting for the uh, Penguins parade to begin. And uh, there were people who came in who drove in from Buffalo, New York from Frederick, Maryland. People came from all over because they wanted to see their Pittsburgh Penguins in person and to see the Stanley Cup in person. A very nice thing that you'll see also is um, you'll see the, the family members. Jeff Jimerson, uh, right there. He's got a beautiful voice. Yeah, yeah maybe he'll sing a little bit today. The ice singing is so. This is Albie, by the way. <laughs> yes, <laughs> thanks for joining us, Albie, on the set here. Yes. We've got Damani Lewis also above all the action in Chopper 11 right now. We we uh, we've got every angle covered big time here. 
And uh, as you look, this is the That looks like there. it's Rob King. And that's Jay Caulfield. Jay Caulfield. Jay Caulfield. Yeah. Yes. Loving on the ice partner. What a great job he did uh, during this playoff series and uh, throughout the playoffs, Albie. Yay! There was a, uh, it was a tremendous playoff run. Jay's been there before. He was a member of the back-to-back -back champions in 91 and 92. So he provided some Thank great insight on what was happening yeah. in this amazing feat by the Penguins. What an accomplishment to win back-to-back. -back. Yeah, that's for sure. So this is the beginning of the parade route we're seeing. We saw a duck boat. What would be a parade in Pittsburgh without a, uh, one of those duck boat tour a, boats there? And, gotta uh, have a duck boat. Uh, we've got a double decker here, so a lot to come. And, and uh, Lisa mentioned Sidney Crosby will, will be in the 70th float, or, I believe. Right. She said so, there are 73, 73. all together. Yeah. So we'll... They should have found a few more, perhaps <laughs> sit in the 87th. I think <laughs> right. that would have made a lot more sense, right, Albie? Let's right. go up to Damani. He's got one of the best views around because he's up in Chopper 11, Damani. Hey, Damani, are you there? Can you hear us? All right, and take a look from uh, Chopper 11 right now, just the uh, number of people out here. It is truly amazing. You know, when you win one cup, you throw a huge party. When you win back-to-back -back Stanley Cups, you throw an even bigger party. And uh, yeah, I can, I can hear you, Peggy, and it's just unbelievable, just the amount of people that are out here celebrating. Uh, we've seen some funny signs uh, from Chopper 11. One sign in particular that says uh, they throw fish uh, in we throw parades. So obviously that's a uh, final shot at the, the Predators, <laughs> but uh, I tell you, it has just been a party from uh, just from what we can see above. It's, uh, you know, and this party is only beginning, Peggy, and it's just uh, been a good and good fun here. We've seen people hanging out from uh, the garages, looking above, trying to get a shot or trying to see the Stanley Cup. Uh, we're trying to actually locate it. We understand that uh, Sidney Crosby will be uh, holding that uh, holding that cup pretty soon, but uh, we're still trying to track it down in the 70th, in the 70th float. So but we're going to keep looking and uh, getting some great shots from Chopper Linden. So let's set, Chopper 11, let's send it back to you guys in the studio. Those are great shots. Boy, yeah. they are really lining the streets. That, yeah. that looks like on the right-hand side, maybe 15 15 rows deep. back. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the crowds are getting thick there, and uh, as we've been telling you all week, they've, been, they've moved the parade route uh, a little further down to Point State Park so folks could fit in over there. That's where Catherine Ament is. We'll check back with, in, uh, with her shortly. And we should also mention you got a lot of high school bands, a lot of local talent supporting the, the Pittsburgh Penguins, of course, in this parade. And he mentioned, Damani did, that we have haven't seen the, the uh, Stanley Cup, but we've seen a lot of makeshift Stanley Cups. <laughs> yes. We saw some at 5 o'clock this morning down there, and folks were getting ready, so there's a lot of those in the crowd. I love that so many of the high schools get to take yeah. part because it's really a party for everyone. It's really a, such a, a point of pride mm -hmm. to have uh, the Penguins coming back with their second Stanley Cup, five cups in all. And Albie, correct me if I'm wrong, so Boston and Pittsburgh, the two cities that have that distinction of having at least five Stanley Cups, at least five World Series wins, and at least five Super, Bowl. Super Bowls. That's amazing. Five, five, and six now. The Not Steelers bad. are six, and the Penguins awesome. moving close with five to match yeah. the Pirates' five World Championships. Mm -hmm. We saw the ice crew walking by a moment ago. Uh, there's another ducky boat. Yeah. You know, if... if if they could figure out a way to get fireworks, this would be a <laughs> convergence of things that Pittsburgh loves. Uh, Pittsburgh loves a parade, and uh, they love welcoming home their uh, Stanley Cup champions. Chase Williams is along the parade route. Hi, Chase. A moment ago. Uh, hey guys, how you doing? We are here at the corner of Grant and Boulevard of the Allies. The parade will come from this this way just a, in just a second. Uh, as Lisa just said, they are on their way down and they will take a right turn down here on Boulevard of the Allies and make their way to Point State Park. Now I want to show you guys something very, very cool. Of course, the fans over here. We got fans all over the place. And then... I like, I like this sign right here. I may live in Florida, but my heart belongs to the Pittsburgh Penguins. And uh, you, I've seen you guys uh, for when we got here. Uh, who are we most excited to look for? Uh, we got what? Chris Letang, Sid, Mike Sullivan. I mean, give me any. I love them all. I came here from Maryland. All right. Ready. All right. Let's go. Let's 
go, Pens. Hey, Aaron, Aaron, if you can get a shot down here at uh, the, the garage, people off the edge of the parking garage. Fantastic scene. And we are just a few minutes away from the Pens actually making it past us here on uh, the corner of Boulevard of the Allies and Great. It's going to be an exciting time. My first experience of the Penguins parade, guys. We'll send it back to you All for right. right now. All right, Chase Williams, it's, it's starting to heat up. And, you know, he mentioned he was talking to some fans there. They, they want to see Sid, but they also want to see our great coach, Mike Sullivan. And Absolutely. this guy made history here. First U.S.-born head coach in NHL's 100-year history to win multiple cups. What a great coach. I don't know much about the hockey game like you do, Albie, but this guy seemed to recover. Anytime we had a problem, he figured it out fast. He's the voice of reason, and he's the, he gives everybody a feeling of calm. He's very assertive. The players know who the boss is. Uh, you, you're mentioning his, his accomplishments. He's also uh, in an, a, a very exclusive group here in Pittsburgh now, joining Danny Murtaugh, the, the great Pirates manager, uh, as well as Chuck Knoll, the Hall of Fame Steelers head coach, of course, oh, good as point. the coaches and managers in Pittsburgh sports to win two or more titles. Mike Sullivan, and there's uh, the old two-niner, <laughs> Phil Bork. Bork. Uh, he's our uh, our hockey insider and a good buddy of ours. And I remember Borky from uh, those parades back in the early 90s and his famous quote, let's, let's take this cup down to the river and party all summer. <laughs> uh, he's still known far and wide as a guy who likes to party with the cup. He's told me some great stories about his days with the cups. And it's, it's great to see Phil Bork. Uh, part of all five, yeah. two as a player, and now three uh, up in the broadcast booth. He'll have a ring that gives him one for the thumb. Oh, <laughs> Phil Bork. That's nice. Good stuff. And you know, you they, we, uh, some of the people that we are interviewing along the way, they're from all over. You hear about Steeler Nation. Well, there's a Penguins Nation too. Mm -hmm. It's it's all over the country, fans. No question. And and I think the thing that makes this parade and the parades that Pittsburgh has had for the Penguins so special. Uh, is the fact that all five Stanley Cups were won away from Pittsburgh, in Minnesota, in Chicago, in Detroit, in San Jose, and now in Nashville. The only way we can do it. So you, <laughs> those fans that don't get to be with the team when they win the Cup, and perhaps they don't get an opportunity to see the Penguins uh, players at all. They have an opportunity to see them in person. Now, I think it's even exaggerated this year, the excitement, because the Penguins are back-to-back -back champs and because they won that fifth title that you were talking about, Peggy, and joining, uh, joining that elite, elite group of great franchises. Uh, since the expansion in 67, the Penguins are tied with Edmonton with five. Uh, five Stanley Cups, uh, both of those teams uh, following the lead of the Montreal Canadiens, obviously a great uh, franchise in the NA NHL. All right. Uh, we've got so much more to come. Hey, there's a mini Stanley Cup. <laughs> That'll give you a little taste right now. Enjoy that view. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with more of the second Stanley Cup victory parade in as many years. We'll be right back. Hey everyone, Faisal Kamisa back with you inside the studio. They're going to take a break, so we are as well. More from Pittsburgh as the Penguins celebrate a second straight Stanley Cup in parade fashion. We'll send you back in a sec. Players today. All right, so welcome many back. Of these the players have a story behind them. You're right back to Pittsburgh where the Penguins are celebrating with a parade. For me, I mean, we always make a big deal over 40 year olds, you know, they think they're, they're getting old, but this guy is so accomplished and uh, two goals, I guess. He's the first, uh, the first NHL player, 40 or older since Tamu Solani in 2014 to score at least twice in a single postseason. Not bad for that guy. 40 years old, I remember yeah. him fondly. <laughs> uh, you know, Matt Cullen is a great story and, and his, his children, his, his boys, have been a constant presence in the locker room, sitting beside him during interviews. Mm -hmm. They were at PNC Park last night when Matt Cullen had the honor of carrying the cup into the Pirates locker room. Wow. Sid had it as they got off the bus, but Matt Cullen uh, is pondering retirement now. Yeah. And you think that's a? I think it's a real good possibility. Yeah. I mean, he, go out on a high note. He, uh, he he's, he's certainly a guy. Three cups now overall, two with the Penguins you know, the last two years, and I think that Matt Cullen. Uh, wanted to take in every moment. He wanted to savor it. He wanted to, I asked him uh, the day, the morning of the game six, the morning of the final game, I said, are you able to 
grab these moments as they're happening. Yeah. And he said that he, he said, yeah, I like you guys. And he laughed. And <laughs> That's good stuff. I think uh, the, the fact that his children are with him means so much to him that they're able to experience this. Well, you know, Jay Caulfield told me his daughters were born after the Stanley Cups. They didn't get to enjoy experience, this, experience yeah. it. And, and it's so nice for Matt Cullen to be able to have his kids as part yeah. of this, especially with full knowledge that this could be the end. Yeah. I think he's leaning one way. He hasn't really said what that will be, but it's certainly a possibility, no question about it. Question. We just, I, have a, yeah. I have a player who I also want to talk about whose story kind of resonates with me, but first we want to go out to our Jennifer Tomazic. Jen. Hi, Peggy and Joe. Um, we've been meeting a lot of people out here this morning. They are so excited. You can hear them doing the Let's Go Pens chat chants. I want to introduce you to a very special girl that I just met who has met some of the Penguins, and she really hopes to meet them again. Let me walk you over. This is 13-year-old Kirsten. First, take a look at her sign. We did it. Tell me a little bit about what it means for you to be. It's amazing. It feels like you met him once. Yep. And you want to meet him again. Yep. Uh, you had a chance to meet them. You said around Christmas. All right. Uh, um, tell me what that was like. Having some. Uh... Really fun too. Yeah, sorry about that. That young woman beat cancer. We were yeah. trying to hear from her. What a special time for her as well. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I was. Joe mentioned the interesting stories some of these sure. players have. What about Patrick Hornquist, who used to play for the Predators? You know, got the winning goal. I just love on that his roommate. Story. One of the right? great. <laughs> one of the great stories of this team is and, and when Patrick Hornquist was out with injury. He he was missed so much. They needed his presence in front of the goal very gritty player but yes he was drafted the same year as Sidney that Crosby Ali just went by yep you'll see you'll see many of the players coming by here Ron Hainsey he's a great story played straight more than 900 games without ever having played a Stanley Cup playoff wow. game and Sid that's got to be some handed kind of him the Sid handed cup. him the Stanley I loved Cup that. yeah that was a great moment along with Mark Andre Fleury handing it over uh, to Matt Murray mm -hmm. just pure class Look Trevor Daly garages. yeah Ooh. Trevor Daly was the one that uh, Sidney Crosby handed the cup well, to he last missed out year on it after he yeah. missed out on the yeah. opportunity to to share it on the ice yeah. in, in of those, uh, game six against San Jose. Right yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> some of those people hanging over the side As of that a parent, I'd say, a little yeah. Yes. But, uh, hopefully they know yeah, what they're doing there. part of the excitement. Right. Look at the signage. You well, see the signs? I love, there? I mean, you can I love read. The, it's it's the illustrated. Garages. It's yeah. To see the yeah. fans perch precariously along mm -hmm. those openings of yeah. the, of the uh, parking garages, it's become... Uh, a very popular picture in Pittsburgh where you see Sid yep. holding up the cup from from uh, previous parades mm -hmm. with that that throng behind him. We just saw Trevor yeah. Bailey go by and looked like his son was shooting something. I don't know. <laughs> they had the confetti, confetti float confetti, out yeah, there, right? And, yeah, and we're getting beautiful weather. We should uh, thank Kevin Benson for a second here. The mayor said bring a poncho, and uh, apparently the only thing you need a poncho for is... Uh, I don't know. I when, can't think of anything. Right when now. we were in Nashville, there, the, the immediate thought was, what does the weather look like Tuesday or Wednesday? Yeah. And what we heard uh, not that good. night, Sunday right. night, was the weather would be horrible yeah. Tuesday and right. Wednesday. Yeah. And that's, that's why you can never know. Eddie Johnston, is it, he's oh, the gentleman yeah. who, oh, former yes. coach, former GM of the Penguins. He, okay. he, Eddie Johnston means more to what has happened in Pittsburgh sports and with the Penguins than anybody. He drafted Mario Lemieux. Uh, wow. So we saw see, you know, you know I'd, I'd say that I'd, was a good decision. Oh, you know, I would say it was a great decision. It <laughs> wow. changed the course of sports history in Pittsburgh. Yeah, for EJ, sure. EJ still a, uh, a a very very familiar face down there, mm -hmm. a guy you see all the time. Yeah. Being Cole there with all holding right. up the camera. I love to see the uh, these athletes filming it. You know, everyone is filming them, but they're filming back right at them. Yeah, great. Because they're, uh, they're Carl Hagelin the uh, too, and, and is... Ian Cole holding up his phone. It's it's great. Another great shot is when you see the crowd and everybody in the crowd is holding up a, a phone. <laughs> got their phones and uh, taking pictures. Right. Who's, that? Yeah, who's the Justin? Beers? Who's in the next truck? Who we got here? Hornquist. Oh, Hornquist, the hero. Now, Patrick Hornquist, <laughs> as I mentioned, drafted. 
Oh, he's last, tossing towels. The same year that Sidney Crosby was drafted first. In that same draft. 2005, same draft. Wow. Drafted by Nashville right. on the opposite end of the draft from Sidney Crosby. And now, as teammates, they win the yeah. Stanley Cup for a second straight year. And <laughs> he beats his former team with the game winning right. and the cup winning goal. Yeah. Remarkable story. Yeah, one of the best stories yeah. from this series. Stuff. That was Dumoulin right there? Was that. And Brian Dumoulin. Brian Dumoulin, who, who okay. won two high school championships, yep. two college championships, and uh, two Stanley Cups. And uh, a video that, that from my interview on Sunday night has gone a little bit viral. I said, what do you want to tell the people of Pittsburgh? And he said, we're going to get back and drink beer. <laughs> uh, do you see what they did to that locker room? We had the pictures of the aftermath. Yeah. It was nice. As yeah. you would expect. <laughs> Absolutely. Well deserved. Hey, right? Dumoulin, that guy played 21 minutes per game. He averaged. That's a lot of minutes. Yeah. Right? And he, and he uh, I, I think, you know, it's, it's these younger players. Last year it was Connor Sheary and, and, and Matt Murray, of course. Matt Murray, by the way. Sheary was great for us last year. Yeah, I remember and, that for and sure. Yeah. They all meant so much. Scott Wilson is a rookie this year. But it meant so much uh, to see Matt Murray become the first rookie ever to win two cups. <laughs> In his rookie season. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Stickler right? Still a rookie. A absolutely. As that's a rookie, true. That's he true. wins two yeah. cups. Yeah. I guess that's the way we would say that. He's also the first NHL player to win Stanley Cup uh, his first two years. Uh huh. Uh, so that's a great that's a great thing as well. Yeah, what a career for that kid already. And like you said, as a rookie, I mean, so much accomplished. Goaltender, that is. That's Garen in the back of that truck there? Yeah, he's the associate oh, okay. general manager. He actually uh, he actually coached Matt Cullen when Matt Cullen was eight years old, <laughs> Billy Garen did. <laughs> wow. Um, he meant a lot to, he mentored Sidney Crosby when he, while he was still a player, mm -hmm. Billy Garen. A uh, big part of the Penguins organization is associate GM. Beautiful, beautiful day out there because, again, you're expecting the worst, but the sunshine is a yeah. welcome sight today. And listen to the, if you just listen for a moment, listen to the screams and the cheers. You know, again, many of these fans are perhaps seeing the Penguins for the first time. Maybe you, you got out of work with, with the excuse that we provided you here at Channel 11. Uh, yes, to, we to did. Get, to get to the parade. Right, oh, yeah, a, Murray and Benino. A couple of A-listers right there, a for sure. A little baby who <laughs> sitting won't in the cup, remember right? this, but... <laughs> Matt Murray, wow. Except I mean, for what the a, pictures. What a start to a career. And, and Nick Benino yeah. injured That's early in the series. amazing. Yeah. Broke he was his leg. playing on a... Was it the tibia? A broken tibia. Unbelievable. Not a fracture. Jake Gensel, 13 goals in the in the Is playoffs. Mata there? Uh, Mata, Schultz... Uh, Having a beverage there. Justin Schultz coming here from Edmonton and winning a couple cups. Yeah, and that Talked was a... to him last year when he was experiencing the playoffs for the first time. Now he has two cups. Ali Mata has overcome so much. Yeah. He's a great story as well. And he's gotten better. Uh, he's gotten much more accurate at shooting at the goal. They've worked They've worked with him on that for sure. Gensel just... and Sheary yeah. right here. Yeah. Uh, Jake Gensel, as I mentioned, 13 goals. Wow. 21 points I think he finished with. Just remarkable. Yeah. Uh, Bre uh, Connor Sheary had his fiance on the ice the other night for the second year yes, in a row. Yes, I he saw was, that interview you he's, did. It he's was great. So excited with Stanley Cups his first two seasons. Massachusetts guy like uh, like the head coach, like Sullivan, right? Yeah, Sergey Gonchar there. Excuse me, Rick Tockett. Mm -hmm. Rick Tockett, uh, great player for the Penguins. Love uh, to see these guys from coach. the past still so connected to the team. But a lot of that, you know, I, none I of think that is perhaps ties on in a way is because Mario Lemieux is still the owner. I mean, you got sure. Bob right. Erie, right. Phil Bork, Jay Caulfield all involved as announcers. Yeah. Ah, oh, there's the Hamburglar. <laughs> Phil Kessel. Phil, Phil Kessel. Kessel. When did they shave their beards? Still a Stanley Cup champion. <laughs> well, when when uh, Sidney Crosby got off the bus last night at PNC Park, first thing we noticed was no beard. Okay. Matt Cullen will be 41 the guy. in November. Look at his, is that that's his son, his son right? yes. We also yeah. interviewed the yes, other night in our post-game show. Brooks, Brooks Wyatt and Joey. Kid. Yeah. Look and at look at the look on Matt Cullen's face. <laughs> he is truly soaking in every single yeah. moment of what's happening. He's, yeah. he's trying to take as many pictures, make as many mental notes, mm -hmm. and you know, grabbing those mental pictures. 
Uh, look at him looking around. I, I think he is he is truly overcome by by what has happened here in Pittsburgh. He's and, become yeah. such a fan favorite and a locker room favorite and to as well. Be able mm -hmm. To share that with your children, that just makes it sweeter. Absolutely. And the flowers. How can you not love Mark Andre Fleury? And if we're back here Total next class. year, we're back here next year. He probably won't be right, Albie. It's well, be a tough I think loss that that's us, right? the realization just that a, everybody's facing. Just what it is. He has right. reportedly yeah. uh, agreed to waive his no movement clause. Right. Mark Andre Fleury is as nice an athlete and and is is as much a heart and soul of this team Aww. as those other core players, Sidney Crosby, yeah. of course, and Evgeny Malkin and Chris Letang. To see him hand that cup. Oh, to it was a right. great yeah. moment. Great moment. Was, yeah. That was a, said everything. It was a great moment. He handed the cup off, and uh, I think all of Pittsburgh kind of gasped at, at what a classy gesture that Absolutely. was by Mark andre Fleury. It really was. Uh, his third Stanley Cup. Mark andre Fleury is one of five Penguins who have won three Stanley Cups. Uh, the others are Sidney Crosby, Evgeny Malkin, Chris Letang, um, and the fifth would be Chris Kunitz, and who has won coach. four overall because he also won one in Anaheim. There is Mike Sullivan. What a coach. Yes, Mike Sullivan has just uh, really earned a reputation as a no-nonsense guy, but somebody who can keep the Penguins motivated without getting them He just always had a low. quick answer to the he, problems. Even we had Keel problems, with, with, you know, and he figured it out fast, it seemed like. Never, never panics. No, and that no, certainly that. trickles down to the team. Yeah, that's the important thing. It's all about leadership there. Ron yeah. Burkle, Mario Lemieux, the owners. <laughs> Mario with his fifth cup, three as an owner. I asked him after the game if, if, if the three is an owner and what he's been able to do as an owner, in some ways, perhaps just to satisfy. Now, you'll never replace that feeling as a player, mm -hmm. certainly winning your first cup and True. then back to back a cups. Different kind but of in a different but kind as an of owner, way, yeah. right, right. it's a, a, a more mature and an older American. It's like Lemieux. watching your child succeed in something. Absolutely. Perhaps, right. Right. I did see some video of him, Mario, jumping fully clothed into Sid's pool. Yes, yes. yes. I, I think that's that. a perfect way to kick <laughs> off the summer of the cup. Is it Trisha this so morning too. was like, Did you see him? And I was, I was like, I, I thought you were going to tell me that Trisha did the same thing this morning. Right. You know, glad she made made it back from Sid's house for the <laughs> for the shows today. Iceberg. Hey, there he is. Can you not love Iceberg? Mascot. Get Following the fans the fired up. They even have the Zamboni there. Well, I love of that. course. You gotta yeah. love the Zamboni. Gotta have the Zamboni. Yeah. And there it is on the side, Stanley Cup champions, and they can keep that. They, they, they've got they've got a new great. a new one on there. Add the year 2017. And back I'm sure that's that the chance. driver of the Zamboni. And the you know that's, probably yeah right. That, what I love about the Pens is they love all their people. You know, not just the players, right. but the lady the in the front. Locker room guy, everybody. Yeah. And, right, you know, right. It's really a family. Mm -hmm. Well, and, yeah, that, and that's how you win. They they by winning back to back. It puts them in a very elite group. Back-to-back mm -hmm. -back champion. It's very difficult to win this Stanley Can't Cup. Can't imagine. Yeah. Well, Chris, Chris Letang, Letang, one of the five oh, Penguins. And we, with we won it without him, which and, is amazing. And he came right? on the ice the other night with his uniform on. and That's his uh, wife, Catherine, and his son, I believe. Is that his son? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Like yes it would be. Is it too early to even utter three peeps? <laughs> well, I'm okay with it. Certainly I'm that's something that a lot of people will be... Never gets about. Old. The Prince of Wales trophy given to the Eastern Conference champions on the back of that trophy. Oh, Chris, yes. Kunitz. Okay. Chris Kunitz, a three-time champ with Pittsburgh and a fourth Stanley Cup overall. He's won four Stanley Cups since 2007, Chris Kunitz. His wife, uh, Maureen, uh, I don't know if she's on the truck there or not. I believe she probably is on the left there, perhaps. Yeah. yeah. Gino Malkin. Oh. Gino Malkin did an interview with us uh, leading up to the finals uh, earlier in the playoffs and he talked about how his life has changed with his newborn son sure and now not so newborn now a year old but uh, he got out his phone he showed us pictures Aww. didn't want to leave didn't want to go back to, to uh, you know practice he, he wanted to talk about his son I think he has shown great maturity and and along with Sidney Crosby, who you see right there with the cup. Oh, yeah, that Be is... Be careful! <laughs> uh, Sid's going to take the cup into the crowd. Albie, how much does that cup weigh? Do we know? Do we get a... 33 weight? pounds. It's pretty heavy, that right? That sounds yeah, like yeah. your right number. He's, he's gotten a workout the last few days, for sure.
Yeah, it's, now that it's, is awesome. It looks like it's under armed guards. I mean, it's these folks, wow, what a treat for them. That's pretty neat. It's it's just, uh, it, it's a great sight to yeah. see Sidney Crosby with the cup. It's not just the cup. Even Lisa Sid Sylvester's running. Right she wants a shot of the cup. <laughs> there she is. It is, though, right? There's something really special about that trophy more than any other trophy in sports. Well, I, the, the, the sheer bottom... The size of it yeah. is nothing else. By the way, its its height is 18 and a half centimeters. I got to sit right the, next to it. It was It's really impressive. 34 and a half pounds. feel the gravity of being in its presence. 34 and a half pounds. And I, wow. When our soon-to-be 26-year-old was one week old, the bowl of the cup was his cradle That's for a picture. Cool. Wow. The full Stanley Cup is 89.54 centimeters, 35 and a quarter inches. The height of the bowl mm -hmm. is 19 centimeters or seven and a half inches. That bowl that's on top, some of the rings have been replaced and mm -hmm. put in the Hockey Hall of Fame sure. as new names are added. Okay. That's how that works. But the bowl is the bowl. And, uh, you know, the... Pretty the, nice piece of hardware. Yeah. Oh, this is a great shot here. We just saw the Gateway High School marching band, by the way. I want to give them a little shout-out. They did a great job. <laughs> you know what <laughs> I loved about last there. night's game when the when the Penguins had the Stanley Cup there? Sidney Crosby the went Smythe into the too. bleachers. Oh, yeah. There's the Con Smythe. He's the... Third player to win back-to-back -back back -back. Smythe trophies. Yeah. The other two, Mario Lemieux and Bernie Perrant, the star from the Philadelphia Flyers, Flyers. when they won in 74 and 75. Sid uh, joins a very elite group of players who have won multiple Conn Smythe, but back-to-back -back Stanley Cups and back-to-back -back Conn Smythe that, uh, uh, is a very special very thing for Sidney Crosby to go along with those gold medals, mm -hmm. the Hart trophies, uh, and, and all the other, the Art Ross. Think about the amazing, yeah. the amazing things. World Cup uh, of hockey, uh, hardware. And Sid, he doesn't like. I got news for you. It doesn't get old for him. <laughs> they want to win as many, and it never gets old sure. holding up that Why cup. Not? It Why never not? gets old covering it either. Well, once I, you get a I, little taste, right? You want to come back. That's some more. a good spot for Look it, Sid. Perfect. I like that. Well, I like the fact that he's given everybody a chance to see the cup. He's going in the back. He's going on the side. He's yep. going up how front. About, how about when they got back on Monday? Goes right into Sewickley, into the local drugstore. He's in a Rite yeah. Aid, and the, yeah, <laughs> just, didn't the matter. The local grocery store. I yeah. It, it belongs to the fans as well, you know. They support this team like crazy. Absolutely. Well, Sidney Crosby, uh, as Pittsburghers know, uh, he is mild-mannered. He is mannered, always so courteous and so accommodating with fans. Uh, he's just a nice guy. He's a nice. He's a nice young guy. That's who how Sullivan dirty. described him as well. In, in just a good person. A really good he's person. a good yeah. person. Yeah. And and they're all. A, a group of good people, but Sid, for the for the amount of attention he gets, for the amount of questions he's asked, uh, sometimes he's asked the same question multiple times. He always answers uh, with a smile and 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 gives everybody what they need. He, there are different. Uh, personalities that become the face of hockey. Wayne Gretzky was very different from Mario Lemieux. And and Sidney Crosby has his own style. This but is what uh, Sullivan said. It starts with Sid, our captain, Coach Mike Sullivan said. He's just such a terrific person and has such an appetite to win, and I think it's really contagious amongst our group. We're going to head over to Lisa Sylvester right now. Did you touch it, Lisa? <laughs> Did you get close to it? Oh my gosh. Oh, Joe and Peggy, I was right there. They actually let us follow for a while. Uh, you, you, I'm sure you saw that Sid Crosby. He actually got out with the Stanley Cup and started walking. Fans got to see the Stanley Cup to touch it. This place went wild when they saw Sid Crosby. And the fact that he actually got out and started walking with it, I started Facebook living with it. It was so exciting just to be part of it and to see it live and in person. And for many of these people, some of them have traveled far and wide, some people from New York, some people from Maryland, just 
to be able to see this, and they got what they wanted. They got a chance to see Sid Crosby. They got a chance to see the cup. In fact, some of the people now, this is the tail end of the parade. Some of the people are actually starting to pick up and leave because I think what they want to do is get to the park so that they can then hear from Sid Crosby, hear from Mike Sullivan. But we saw all of the players coming on through, and the crowd just went wild. When Matt Murray went by, you could hear the crowd starting to chant, Murray, Murray. Murray. It was just so exciting and electric to be here. These fans, they watched every game. They held their breath with every single goal, and they got what they wanted. The Cup is back here in the Berg. Reporting live, I'm Lisa Sylvester. Back to me. He actually got out with the Stanley Cup and started walking. Fans got to see the Stanley Cup to touch it. This place went wild when they saw Sid Crosby, and the fact that he actually got out and started walking with it. I started Facebook living with it. It was so exciting just to be part of it and to see it live and in person. And for many of these people, some of them have traveled far and wide, some people from New York, some people from Maryland, just to be able to see this. And they got what they wanted. They got a chance to see Sid Crosby. They got a chance to see the Cup. In fact, some of the people now, this is the tail end of the parade. Some of the people are actually starting to pick up and leave because I think what they want to do is get to the park so that they can then hear from Sid Crosby, hear from Mike Sullivan. But we saw all of the players coming on through, and the crowd just went wild. When Matt Murray went by, you could hear the crowd starting to chant, Murray, Murray, Murray. It was just so exciting and electric to be here. These fans, they watched every game. They held their breath with every single goal, and they got what they wanted. The Cup is back here in the Berg. Reporting live, I'm Lisa Sylvester. Back to you guys. Oh, Lisa, we are jealous. <laughs> I want some of your pictures. Look at Sid letting everyone oh, get a little there piece. He got out again, Lisa, and that he's on the move with the there Cup. And Sidney Crosby, people. is he's keenly aware of, of how he is viewed yeah. and how important he is to hockey. Malkin. Is he letting the fan hold no, it? Yeah, no, it's that's, Malkin. That's Malkin. Unless it's okay, a, I see oh, it's a Malkin, Malkin jersey, <laughs> but I, 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 oh, I think it's Malkin. It's a Malkin it's jersey. It's huge. Uh, now Malkin's letting everybody touch it. Oh, yeah. Maybe it's going to be that a little bit awesome. of a relay and they're going to keep handing I it off. I can guarantee yeah. you, Phil Pritchard, who's the keeper of the cup, uh, is, is he shaking right now? If he sees him hand it off to anybody, Mm -hmm. And now there's a there's hockey etiquette here. You you don't put Wait, the cup rules? above your yeah. head, okay. generally speaking, unless you've won unless the you cup. Won it? Oh, unless okay. you've won the cup. Uh, although you'll see pictures uh, certainly from the past yeah. of people holding it in the regular fans right, holding the cup in the air. Uh, they've they've got no -no. they've gotten away from that. Okay. In recent years, uh, they they allow anyone to pose with the cup, but. But you don't lift it above your head. Now, there are still okay. gotcha. some that are lucky enough, perhaps, to be in the locker room, family members, sure. friends uh, that, that hold the cup high. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, uh, you don't hold the yeah. cup above your head unless you've won the cup. And that's sense. that's a accepted piece of etiquette that, that I think most people respect. Uh, look at the fans. I mean, to get up close and be able to touch that Point Stanley State Cup Park. is... Yeah. As I said, many of these fans have never been to a game, I would I would think. Many of these fans have never perhaps seen the Penguins in person. And and many have not seen the Stanley Cup unless right. they've seen the last year. A lot of people can afford to go to a well, hockey he, game and take the whole family. So right. This, this, this is, is a great day to get out and yeah. enjoy it. And Absolutely. I, and that's why I love Sid and, and Gino taking the cup up to the rope line. Straight up into their. Yeah. Letting they're them coming. touch it. Oh, they're coming to us? That's beautiful. Okay. Thing. This also is what just makes me. I've said We're this before set. and I really mean it. Pittsburgh is such a great city. And part of the reason is because of our sports teams. And you see, something yep. like this this is just cementing in the hearts of all these people here this day yeah. this win absolutely and there's our lovely Hi guys so the parade is finally getting to us and you can well. see the excitement is building as we have Pittsburgh police officers <laughs> I love it they're honking the horns and the fans are into it with let's go pens thank you very much pittsburgh police officers for all you do you can see how excited these guys are they've been waiting a long time people have been out here for quite some time waiting for the parade finally to get to them and so now we're getting it down here we are at the very end so we're on commonwealth place right where the penguins parade ends you can see how people are just so excited there's a lot of families out here we're getting the public works truck that's coming by here, so 
We are certainly glad that the parade's finally getting down. I can't wait to see all the people you guys have been talking about. I've been listening to you talking about every player that's been going by. So uh, we're going to check back with you guys in just a little bit. All right, uh, Jennifer just uh, showed us the uh, beginning of the parade for the people at the end of it, at the end of the route right now. We're getting close to uh, uh, all the uh, players in the Stanley Cup itself to make its way down to Point State Park. Last year it ended up on Stanwick Street, and we were talking about how they're they always want to make this this experience a fan experience and mm -hmm. by putting it down at Point State Park you, the fans can get there's down so there. There's more room. There's sure. more room. They weren't all jammed up. Last year there were 20 rows back. I mean you see there are about 15 well, 20 rows here. When you I, get more space right now. When I drove to the studio today early there were fans already packed mm -hmm. into the area around Point State Park. 5 a.m. they were down there Albie. The, it was, it was, the, the uh, 1991 uh, Cup I, I still have a picture of Mario Lemieux at the podium at Point State Park, along with Ed DeBartolo, the, the now deceased the former Penguins owner. And uh, there weren't as many people down there that day as there are here today. And, but it was, it, it's interesting to see how the parades have evolved uh, into this new era of hockey and this new era of the Pens. I mean, they're the first team in the salary cap era to win back-to-back -back cups. There's a lot of excitement generated around this team. The fact that the franchise has now won five. As I mentioned earlier, uh, the fact that the Penguins won the cup on the road again gives these fans a chance to even this guy here look at pile that. in and see it up close. And, Joe's and, kids are down there. They're, they're in there and somewhere. It's, it's so nice to be able to bring you these these shots, Absolutely. these these pictures, these this video of. Uh, the sights and sounds of the celebration because it is it was, a celebration. Yeah, they celebrated yeah. with the cup on the ice, but now they get to share it with the fans of Pittsburgh. Yeah, and Channel 11, uh, it was our pleasure to bring you the Stanley Cup Finals. And what a great result. We are going to take a quick break. There's a look at one of many Stanley Cups <laughs> <laughs> out there today. We'll be right back. Less than a minute. Keep it here. Xfinity congratulates the... ...in downtown Pittsburgh for our Penguins, our heroes. Back-to-back -back Stanley Cups. They did it in 91, 92, 99, right, Albie? 2009. 2009, okay, 2016, there you go. 2016 and then and this then year. This year, that is just amazing. Five Stanley Cups. Man, they won them all on the road, and that's why this makes it even more special for these fans right here. As we were saying, a lot of them don't get a chance to see the team when they're here, and they're getting a great opportunity today. And yeah, a lot I hope of them, our viewers yeah. feel like they're right there. I do. Absolutely, I do. I and also, so also, thanks to everybody who's tweeting us and, and, and letting yeah. us know how they're feeling. Mm -hmm. now, you got to... Great tweet here from Bryce Boy One. Uh, he says we're talking about the, the you know fans not respecting the etiquette, not to put the yep. cup over their head. It says professional hockey players won't touch it until they've won it, and that's true as well. Mm. There's a a very superstitious group. Patrick oh. Hornquist. I remember this last year, and it was the best part of winning the cup, and it's the same thing this year. Only one team gets to do this house event like that. No, obviously, that's that's huge, and we want it back to back. And with this group we have here, we, we believed in ourselves, and we've been celebrating here for a few days, and we're going to keep going. Carter Rowdy, Carter Rowdy. No, not too many. I'm going to go on down, down here in the. To the fans, going to sign a few. Carter Rowney looked like he was having a good time. Who do you think is having the best time out of you guys? I think we all have a good time, but uh, for sure, probably one of the younger guys, Gens, I would say, who came up and played great for us. And uh, you know, he's 23 years old and scored how many goals? And, and you know, that's that's good for him. You guys have had so much support all all season long, but to see everyone come out and support you guys here today, oh, it's such a special day. What is that like? No, that this is something you're never gonna forget. This. This is crazy to see all these people come here for, for us and we, we, we've been having support all year but this is for sure the, the craziest I've ever seen. Patrick, who's going to be the first guy to say let's do this again next year? No, uh, we're all going to do it. We're all going to say it. <laughs> Did it sink in that you scored the game winner yet? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, that was a big moment for me, at least in Nashville, and score that goal and, you know, to win win this cup, that's, that's a special moment for sure. Right there he is, Patrick Hornkiss. He is uh, the 
the player that scores the game winning goal for the Pittsburgh Penguins to make it uh, two in a row for the Penguins five overall he's having a good time we're all having a good time here on the corner of Grant and Boulevard of the Allies hopefully we'll try to come back to you here shortly and have a few more uh, interviews for you guys. You know, these hockey players play in front of huge crowds, right, yeah. all the time. But this is a completely different animal. I mean, yes, they're <laughs> used to crowds, but this is their hometown crowd. And it's a mixed bag of a lot of <laughs> a lot of emotion. But it's all it. adulation. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes when you're true, on the ice, true, people right. are yelling at you. Yeah, you're with yeah. some in some hostile territory. But this yeah. is just full out love. Yeah, and they're, you know, they're all on top of each other, which is great. You love to see that. And, and as Albie was saying before, we love the look at the, the, we're getting from Chopper 11 right now. I mean, <laughs> usually you got cars in these garages, but you have people spilling out signs everywhere. I just can't get over the amount of signage that uh, that's up along the uh, the outer walls of these, uh, these garages in downtown Pittsburgh. Yeah. I would imagine that it, it has not sunk in completely yet for Patrick Corquist. He was asked about that game-winning and cup-winning goal yeah. uh, against his former team. Peggy was asking how long he was with Nashville. Six seasons. Six. This is his third with the Penguins. And I, when you score a goal to win a Stanley Cup, that's enough. <laughs> when you score a goal against the team that drafted you 230th overall last pick. the last pick in the draft wow. it i think it's even it's it's even more special and that and goal i mean you know everyone's like it was a fluky whatever you know that takes coordination to do what he did to bat that puck out of the air with the you know absolutely right? i mean that's that's talent Absolutely. That's, that's not a slap shot from the point there. You know? As I said earlier, he's such a gritty player. Yeah. Uh, getting uh, those goals in front, uh, you know, it takes a special kind of a player to be able to go and get those. And the goal that you're talking about, absolutely. Right. I mean, I mean wow. I don't, how fast do you have to think to do that? Kind yeah. of a symbolic in your face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's also interesting that, that he hasn't really mentioned too much the fact that it was his former team. Know. He knows we, that we right. make a he's big been asked deal about Oh, we've right. talked about it, but, for, but, he, yes, but not he's just enjoying the fact that he has a Stanley Cup game winner yeah. uh, for the Penguins. That's amazing. I'd love to hear what they are up. saying about it in Nashville. I mean, <laughs> it's a tough to If you put your head out the window, you can hear them <laughs> <laughs> crying. Yeah, you can hear the screams. Yeah, it was a. Uh, it, it certainly was an amazing season for the Nashville Predators, and the excitement that they experienced down there, I think, was a lot like the Penguins in 1991 when they first came on the Stanley Cup scene. Of course, the Penguins won, uh, but but they were up against a force more powerful than the, yeah. th than themselves, and and I think the Penguins were a better team. Uh, I know here there were two some... reasons why right <laughs> here. Yeah, Benino and Murray right there. That's Grand Street and Boulevard of the Allies. Matt Murray and Nick Benino. I saw Nick Benino uh, Matt walking Murray's coming. into PNC Park. Murray's running into the crowd. Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna stir things up. Good stuff. So he's yeah. coming over to our cameras. Matt wow. Murray. That's well, Matt, wonderful. how how exciting is this second year in a row? Uh, is, does it get old? Yeah, no, definitely not. This is crazy. I mean, uh, we're about to go down the, the best stretch here, I think, by the parking garage. But it's crazy to see how many people are coming out to support us. And, uh, and to answer your question, no, this never gets old. Have you had a chance to sit back and reflect as what you guys have done here uh, winning back-to-back? -back? Uh, not yet. No, not really. It's been such a ride since we... You know, since we won, so I uh, haven't really had a second to ourselves yet, but it's been a blast, and, and we're gonna, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna milk it for everything it's worth, and we're gonna enjoy it while we're here. What did it mean to you to get the cup from Mark Andre Fleury the other night? Yeah, that was, uh, you know, that meant a, a great deal to me. Um, that was a really special moment for me personally. He's, he was such a mentor for me ever since I got here, and um, you know, I should have got the cup almost dead last with my rank being so low. So um, he, you know, he felt the need to do that. And, and it's just such a kind gesture, and um, again, it meant so much to me. Saw the video and pictures from uh, Sid's house the other night. Who's having the most fun out of you guys? Probably only Mata, I would say, <laughs> but everybody's having a great time. All right, thanks, Bob. All right, there he goes, the goaltender for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Matt Murray is the first rookie to win two Stanley Cup championships ever in the history of the NHL. Let's send it back to you guys.
in his first two years. First, wow. <laughs> first goalie yeah. to win Stanley Cups his first two How's years. He and top how do you that? go up from that? Right. You know? <laughs> and based on Three. his time of service, right? Fan, our viewers may not understand. He's still technically a rookie. Right. Uh, remember, he came on late last year, which means technically two he's cups. the first goalie to win the cup twice as a rookie. That's Think about that for a second. Okay. Yeah, that just wow. doesn't happen. The pride of Thunder Bay, Ontario. <laughs> Matt yes. Murray. And I, I, he was very, very uh, obvious in his affection for Marc-Andre Fleury. Uh, in, in, in the fact that Fleury, Fleury handed the cup off to him, I, I think that gracious. was an unbelievable moment. I, I think that that's a moment, uh, knowing what we know about the situation, uh, that's a moment that I think everybody will always remember, sure. and uh, certainly Matt Murray will. There's so many great things about this team. I, I had the nicest voice message the other day from a viewer who was just talking about how with all the bad news in the world, this is so great. Jake right. Gensel's with Chase. It's a crazy thing because you don't always get that. Only one team gets to do this. Now, how special is that for you? This is an unbelievable feeling. I mean, to do this with the fans, it's, it's special. And, uh, obviously, we're going to enjoy it. In your wildest dreams, could you ever imagine to be called up your rookie year and then and then do this? No, no, you don't expect this at all. And um, obviously, it was a great year, but uh, enjoy it now. You're gonna get the cup for a day. Yeah. Thought about what you're gonna do. Going man. back to Minnesota. <laughs> There he is, Jake Gensel having a good time. We just saw Ole Mata, uh, Carter, or I forget who it was, said that Ole Mata was having the best time. There Ole Mata goes. He is having a blast here. It's Connor Sherry, Jake Gensel, uh, everyone having a good time here on the corner of Grant and Boulevard of the Allies. Guys? That's the uh, that's the hot spot there. We're getting the interviews on the corner of uh, <laughs> right there, where that is on uh, Grant. Those lucky fans are yeah. getting a nice high five. They that won't forget stuff. soon. Okay, yeah, that's Grant in the Boulevard there. We seem to be getting uh, some good opportunities there with Chase uh, talking to these guys. And we just heard uh, Hornquist say that uh, this is perhaps the <laughs> uh, Mr. Gensel's having the best day. <laughs> and it looks like it. He, he is. is really like yeah. a, a kid out there. Well, and he is almost he is still a kid. A kid right? yeah. You know, there's <laughs> talk about rookies. Yeah, yeah. Young, yeah. young guys. He's Phil, to... Mr. Experience. <laughs> Phil, the thrill. <laughs> I wonder how many hot dogs he's had so far today. Well, <laughs> Jim Rutherford, the general manager, he, he made the, the, uh, the trade. He acquired Phil Kessel, or the, the move to a, a, yeah. a, a acquire Phil Kessel, July 1st of 2015. Um, amazing. Yeah, that's a great shot for Matt Cullen there and his, uh, his kids wearing the Malkin and Flurry jerseys. I wonder how he feels about that. Hey. <laughs> Matt Cullen, Dad's they call him Dad. Yeah. Yeah. He's, you know, he's 40 years old. He's with his kids, as he has been throughout this entire so experience. I hope this isn't the last time I see Flurry. Yeah, what a, it is what what a, a high great run there. he's had in Pittsburgh. But uh, I know everybody has a great love for Marc-Andre Fleury, what he's done, how he carries himself. Team guy, the yeah. ultimate team guy. So much more than just a player. And people, people recognize that. You can say that about a lot of players, but he really, he proves that. A lot like Sydney. They're making their way toward Point State Park, where I am sure it is packed. People yeah. sitting in their chairs, waiting for the moment that these guys take the stage. So the party is far from over. No, and Catherine Amenta's down at the stage. She's got the uh, great front row seat there. Uh, to what is going to happen, and it's going to get loud. It's well, loud and crazy now. The high temperature on Sunday was 87 degrees. <laughs> I think that that <laughs> the was low was 66, and the low was 66. <laughs> I think that's very telling. The oh, Penguins yeah. won uh, Game Six uh, <laughs> in, in the series. The Stanley Cup Final series was the 66th playoff series in the history of the Penguins, and Game <laughs> Six. Sunday night was the 87th game of this year's playoffs. Wow. So if you're into numerology uh, and, and the significance of certain numbers, <laughs> then the Penguins certainly have that in abundance. I'd say. In wow. abundance. Here's another one for you. The, the time between the 2016 Cup and the 2017 Cup, 364 um. days. 
or just over 8,700 hours. hours. Wow. So uh, the, the Penguins, with their fifth Stanley Cup, won by four head coaches. Badger Bob Johnson, uh, a Pittsburgh legend, uh, became ill and, and, and died uh, shortly after that first cup. Scotty Bowman, uh, one of the one of the great names mm -hmm. in the history of yeah. the league, the all-time winningest coach, came in, won the second. Dan Bilesma won the third in 2009, and, and Matt Sullivan, <laughs> excuse me, Mike Sullivan, Mike Sullivan yeah. uh, has has won the last two. Mike Sullivan joining Danny Murtaugh and Chuck Noll as Pittsburgh coaches or managers with multiple titles, and I think uh, everybody gets a chance to soak it in today. Yeah. The sign of confetti, police <laughs> on horseback. And I, the police on horseback are part of the parade, but they're also there for an important reason. The city's been working hard to keep people safe. Yeah. You know, you have close to a half million people gathered downtown. It's not an easy and job. No, it's not. Yeah, and a stressful one for them while everyone else is having a good time. They really have to be on point. And speaking, I mentioned yeah. I mentioned Badger Bob Johnson. He, he used to say mm -hmm. it's a great day for hockey. I think that everybody would agree that uh, they won't play a game today, but this is a great day for hockey. I Absolutely. agree. It's Absolutely. it from the weather to the to the mood of the crowd. The crowd's been very well behaved, from what we can tell. What a great shot there with the confetti wow. machine. Now, the, now it's going. The gold <laughs> confetti. Yeah. They have it working now. Yeah, that's good stuff. I just uh, I, I I believe that Pittsburgh. Fans, Pittsburgh citizens in general, Western Pennsylvania people, they love a parade. Mm -hmm. And if it's a parade to celebrate their team's championship, then all the better. Pittsburgh, I think, has a has a closer, a more intense connection to its sports teams than any other city in America. Uh, you can argue that other cities okay. have many championships, but Pittsburgh people, we really feel like it's our team and from the time I was young and the Steelers won those four Super Bowls in the 70s you were absolutely high and proud you, you had your head high mm -hmm. and, and, and you were proud to, yeah. to, to say you were from Pittsburgh because of these teams and that's how people are today they there is a genuine sense of pride a just a uh, a great joy that they bring Western Pennsylvania when the Penguins are winning or the Pirates or the Steelers whatever the team may be uh, remember when the Pirates were in the playoffs and the Steelers winning Super Bowls? How the whole mood of the whole mood of everybody changes, mm -hmm. and uh, it's easier to go to work. Uh, the weekends seem to get there faster. Something to look forward to. Something it's, to look forward to. And absolutely. for the Penguins, it's so unique because the playoffs start in mid-April. Yeah. And if they, and they win never the Stanley end. Cup, it goes <laughs> until mid-June. Yeah. And it's almost every other Coach night. Chris uh, absolutely. Chris Letang, Chris it's Letang. a great thing, though. Chris Letang is getting off the truck yeah. now and coming yeah. to our, our cameras. We'll hear from him. Uh, you don't get uh, used to it. Uh, we have uh, the best fan base in, uh, in the NHL, so uh, not surprised, but it's always fun. I know it was a, a disappointing postseason for you, but this has to really make up for it. Yeah. the cup again. I mean, uh, it, it's all right. You know, it's part of the game, and uh, uh, like always, when somebody something goes wrong, you, you have somebody to step up, and guys did an unbelievable job. It was. Uh, it was fun to be part of it, and they always made me feel that I was part of it. So it's a great day. Chris, I know you had, would rather have been playing, but you got to be really proud, especially the way the defense performed while you were injured. Yeah, no, they, they played uh, they played great. Uh, everybody bought in, and uh, everybody knew their role. They were playing really well, and I mean, everybody was playing 20, 21 minutes, so they had a big chunk of uh, ice time. They had to play really well, and we played a tough opponent. So sorry, I'm sweating. This core group has been able to do that. Does that sink in? Did you think about that? I mean, uh, I think we're always looking forward. So um, next year, why not? And uh, I think that's the way to approach it. Any plans with the cup? Uh, I already sent my date, but uh, I don't know yet. I don't know. A lot of drinking. <laughs> there he is, Chris Letang.
Chris Letang enjoying this one. Hey, uh, yeah. Guys, let's send it back Good to for you, Chris Letang. Nice mug or yeah. nice cup to drink or out drink of, out of the cup. <laughs> Underwent successful surgery to repair a herniated disc yeah, in his yeah. neck. Yeah, that's. Uh, he looked good on the ice the other night. It looks like he's recovering nicely and so we'll looking see him back forward next to 2017-2018. Huh? Right. There's Sid putting the Stanley Cup back on the back of that, uh, on the tail end of that pickup truck. Yeah, if you're wondering why it's taking forever for them to get to the points, because Sidney Crosby wants to make sure everybody gets a touch for a, as many people as possible. So he's, they've been stopping, getting off, and, and really giving people a chance to experience the cup, so. And he was at the very tail end. And, the, and the he's on the end of the parade, yeah. exactly. <laughs> that. Prince of Wales trophy, oh, accompanied by trophy. Chris Kunitz, the four-time Stanley Cup champion. Prince of Wales trophy awarded to the Eastern Conference champions. Chris Kunitz uh, also enjoying his time with his family. They've gone through this. Evgeny Malkin talked about his maturity and that one-two punch uh, between Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin, really unmatched, and their legacy is cemented even more so at this point. Uh, already two Hall of Fame players, but adding a third Stanley Cup and back-to-back -back cups certainly uh, adds to their legacy in a oh, big yeah. way. Oh, yeah. In a big way. Big way. I know that sure. Sidney Crosby's so competitive, as they all are. Athletes at this level, athletes of this remarkable skill level, uh, they want to win. There's some rough weather there. out there, I see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's raining confetti. It's raining That's the only confetti. rain we got. Thank you, Kevin Benson, wherever you are. <laughs> That's a, he's that Kunakle there. Uh, he's giving some autographs out. I love it. These guys are just so involved. Well, I think that that's the other thing. The, 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 the Penguins have really uh, forged this great attachment with their uh, with their fans they from really their have. their student rush that they have, and they they bring pizzas out when. when uh, Students are in line for they tickets. They go and deliver tickets. They deliver so they tickets to season right. ticket yeah. holders. Yeah. I love That's that. Great. And it's it's a they have done a wonderful job of uh, of becoming part of the community. Yeah. Uh, the a Penguin, lot of them the end up living here yeah. for the rest of their lives. Yeah. The Penguins Foundation. They That's do so great many foundation. great. They do so many great things. They're working and on cancer research mm -hmm. and really funding some amazing yeah. projects that Along will really make a difference. Along with the Mario Lemieux Foundation. Yeah. You're talking about an definitely, impact, definitely. just such an impact in Western Pennsylvania. There it is, the Stanley Cup. Uh, it's it's the toughest trophy to win. Certainly, extremely difficult. It's also so recognizable, and unlike other sports, it has this unique uh, the, the the etiquette that goes with winning the cup. Okay, uh, I think we're going to send things over to Chase Williams. He's been getting a ton of great interviews. Chase, who do you got? What are you talking about? This is exactly why everyone has come to see the Stanley Cup, and it's Sidney Crosby, the captain, having himself a good old time as he takes a right onto Grant Street, holding it high, giving it a nice little kiss. The third Stanley Cup for Sidney Crosby and the Pittsburgh Penguins in the last nine seasons, and it all starts players-wise with Sidney Crosby. Unbelievable talent, unbelievable scene here in Pittsburgh right now as the finishing touches of this parade are making its way to Point State Park. Sidney Crosby headed that way right now, guys. You know, seeing Sid with that cup above his head and, and kissing the cup as he has many times, but this time doing it for the benefit of these fans who have found a spot on the side of the road or out an office window or uh, on the side of a parking garage. The Stanley Cup first awarded in 1893 to the Montreal Hockey Club. Wow. Uh, it was commissioned in 1892 as the Dominion Hockey Challenge Cup. Mm. That's what it was called. Yeah, that's what it was called back in the day. Named after Lord Stanley of Preston, uh, who was the Governor General of Canada. And he donated it as an award to Canada's top-ranking amateur ice 
Hockey Club. Uh, so it has a great history, and the names yeah. that are on that cup and the stories that the cup could tell. Each player uh, receives the cup for a certain period of time throughout this summer of the cup, uh, and they will take it back to their <laughs> native countries. Look at that sign right there. Someone please adopt me. My it's family are <laughs> Rangers fans. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. Hey, on that yeah. note, have a good laugh. <laughs> We've got the cup heading toward Point State Park right after this. In Pittsburgh, the day that our Pittsburgh Penguins paraded <laughs> down the street to throngs of hundreds of thousands. There were 400,000 last year, and they're thinking it could be close to half a million this year. And our Jennifer Tomazic is right in the middle of it all. Jennifer. Hi Peggy. Hi Peggy. We wanted to bring it back. The last time that we were talking with you, unfortunately we had some microphone issues, but I want to reintroduce you to Kirsten. Uh, so Kirsten is out here today and you actually had a chance to meet some of the players before. So tell us a little bit about that. It was very amazing and it was a very interesting experience. So the so the players actually will show you her sign. It says, we did it, Penn's won the cup, and I beat cancer. Kirsten is 13 years old. She's from Cecil, and she got a chance to meet several of the Penguins. We have Alimata, Marc-Andre Fleury, and uh, Sid. So they came to your hospital room. Mom, what was that like for you to be able to have them in your daughter's hospital room? It was very amazing. It brightened their spirits. It was a horrible time, and they were amazing guys for coming and spending the time on the ninth floor and all of children's. Well, we're so happy that you're here, Kirsten, and we're so glad that you guys were able to come out here and celebrate. Who do you want to see the most? Sid. <laughs> Sid, that's a good answer. That's a good answer. Well, we know that they're already making the rounds. We've already seen a few of the players come down here, so we'll try to see what we can do for you. Let's go, Pens! 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 Our Thank resident you guys. cheerleader, Jennifer yeah. Tomasic. <laughs> exactly. Well, she's dressed for it today. And what a great story there. Uh, that's good stuff. It touches on what Albie said about yeah. how these guys they are out. so great. They really reach out mm -hmm. and to go to Children's Hospital, that yeah. just means so, so much. And you Got could it. see it in, as that mother was talking, I thought she was going to burst into yeah. tears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy tears. Yeah, another great shot there of the point there and the park, you know, slowly filling in. What a great idea. What a great idea to, yeah. to, to open that field up uh, to end this parade this year. Great, great move by the city. Party day in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Well, I uh, I enjoyed some tweets from Scott Wilson, the yeah. rookie. Did you see that there? Uh, I was just looking. He, he said, truck nine will need <laughs> multiple beers. And then he said, and S S SPF 140. <laughs> That's funny. Scott Wilson was selected by the Penguins in the 2011 draft, way down in the 209th overall pick, seventh wow. round pick. Um, Played for UMass Lowell and and uh, as a rookie wins the cup and I know that uh, it means so much to these young guys who are all of a sudden thrust into. I mean, think about it. Yeah. Jake Gensel has become such a big part of what they do. What and, a huge output from him. And there's a, and and I think for the first. Let's face it. For the first short period of time perhaps there is like complete awe mm -hmm. of, of, of Crosby and Malkin and I think they have to actually get used to playing with them and yeah. get past the uh, the intimidation perhaps and it of happened playing with those quick players. though I mean I think know, it's yeah. safe to say that Jake Gensel and 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 Scott and, and Wilson did just that oh, Scott absolutely. Wilson uh, I'm so sure excited. Sid makes it easy for he, them. No, he yeah, does. Yeah. But just by the admiration that I'm they have sure. for him, uh, yeah, I, sure all of a sudden they, they pinch themselves. They think, wait a minute, <laughs> I'm, I'm playing on a line with, or I'm playing on the, uh, the same team with Sidney Crosby. Uh -huh. Scott Wilson the other night had his mom and his dad and his sister and his girlfriend on the ice. And I think the best thing, especially for the young players, but the older players as well, sure. is sharing that moment on the ice with the cup with your family. The pictures, mm. the memories, um, and in, in many cases, uh, perhaps they're thinking back to their early hockey days, you know, going back to their childhood and, and their parents supported them through the, the sometimes uh, very difficult life of a young hockey player with, yeah. with uh, 
an incredible commitment of time and in some cases money and, and uh, just a lot of attention that has to be given to these young players who achieve in this case the ultimate in the sport of hockey. They are Stanley Cup champions and I think that's really what makes it that's what makes these stories so great. Oh, absolutely. What a great group of guys. And uh, we are looking live above the point right there. That's the stage where the Penguins, uh, they will take that stage along with some other dignitaries and celebrate this second in a row Stanley Cup victory. And in that crowd somewhere is my co-anchor, mm -hmm. Catherine Amenta. What's happening, Catherine? Absolutely. There are people up on the roof. They are in the windows of the apartment buildings. And the Wyndham, it's like I spy people watching in the different windows. Everybody wow. has these windows packed, ready for the players to come by. They're starting to come by. The confetti has arrived, so we know that everybody's starting to pull into place. And Lisa was saying earlier how the people at the beginning of the parade were starting to flow here to the point, and we're seeing that. It's really starting to get packed now. So they're going to be hearing from uh, Sidney Crosby and all the players, of course. And then something new this year because of Nashville, obviously, a very special ceremony where they're going to release Stanley the Catfish back into the river from once he came. So that's going to be a very special moment where we're not throwing catfish here in Pittsburgh. We throw parades, as Trisha tweeted earlier this week, and we're simply releasing him to let him live his life. So that is what is happening here at the point. Again, just a few minutes from now, everybody will be heading back up onto the stage. I just want to read the sign right here. It says, Father, sit in the Holy Ghost. This is a religion here. If anybody in Nashville said that this wasn't a hockey town, they are very wrong. <laughs> That's for Back sure. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Catherine. We'll be I checking like in that. with her in, in uh, a lot more uh, as this thing starts heating up at the point. But, yeah, they're, they're releasing the Stanley back into the... Uh, what, 45 the pounds? 40, 45 like pounds that. or something like that. Yeah, exactly. They're not terribly attractive. No. Pictures, those no. But they taste good if you deep fry them correctly. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I've lived in the South before. So. You know, we have a we have a request on Twitter here, or information on Twitter, and I think it's worth mentioning. Uh, thank you, uh, Kenneth Wirtz, for sending this. He says, how about the Johnstown connection? Uh, Hockeyville with Chris Stewart, the trainer, and Dana Heinze, uh, the equipment manager extraordinaire, and winning their... Uh, those cups, and I, I think that uh, when when Peggy talked about how they share these cups with everybody, those two guys mean so much to what they do, sure. and and uh, I just think it's a it's a thrill for them as much as it is the players because the players would not be out there if it weren't for those two guys. And that's that's why this parade is so is so much more than just uh, a parade for the team, like we were saying before. The, you know, the organization is celebrated from every guy all the way from the bottom to the top. Well, I uh, I remember the first cup like it was yesterday, and uh, who can believe? 26 years ago now since that that, that first I cup. I was here. It was right after I came to Pittsburgh. It was exciting. Then the second cup, uh, when they beat the Blackhawks in four games, that was the first time, June 1st of 92 was when they won that cup. That was the first time the Penguins, the, the, the NHL Stanley Cup game was ever played in the month of June. They won it on June 1st. Wow. And, uh... C-130 flying over the city there. I guess in tribute to, in honor of our pens. Mm -hmm. I just think it's uh, it's almost a rite of spring in some ways. It's easier to say that considering it's the second consecutive years that Pittsburgh has had uh, had a parade, had a big party down at the point. But I think it's uh, it's something the Penguins fans have come to expect. They're competitive uh, year in and year out. They have this string of playoff appearances. Uh, the Penguins have become. Uh, the most successful franchise uh, in the NHL and, and, and by winning five cups they join a very elite group since the expansion in 67 five cups ties them with Edmonton and trailing only Montreal over that period of time it's a remarkable story and you know what point back point to Mario Lemieux he saved the team as a player he saved the team as an owner and as we mentioned earlier in our in our uh, our party here, our show. Uh, Eddie Johnston, the guy who drafted Mario Lemieux, maybe is the MVP of Pittsburgh sports all time. Uh, <laughs> I'd say that was a great draft pick. Yes. <laughs>
You got young fans there. They're loving it. And it's, it's a little hot and humid. That's not stopping that. 81 degrees. I was just talking with our 81 meteorologist. Degrees. 81 degrees. And the rain is holding off Looking until great. this afternoon or early evening. Yeah. So this is perfect. Not this bad. is perfect. Yeah. I love that guy with the hat right there. I see it. <laughs> Wow, yeah, so now we're really getting an influx of the players funneling into uh, Point Park and uh, just wait until they hit the stage. I remember last year when they... Were you down there? Yeah, we were down there. Catherine and I were down there, basically same proximity right, yeah, where she is in front of the stage. And mm -hmm. There was no need for a headset or anything. You couldn't hear anything. It didn't matter, you know, because... The it's roar just of the crowd so loud. Yeah, would yeah. drown everything out. I mean, when Sid turns that corner and they pull down uh, in front of the West in there with that... Cup. Yeah. It's just to sit back and enjoy the show. And it's like uh, at the British Open when they're coming up 18 yeah. on Sunday the applause and the there. crowd yeah. comes behind them. Remember when Arnie made that last yeah, trip? Yeah, right, right, <laughs> right. Oh, do I ever, uh, do I ever. Yeah, the, the U.S. Open the chills. out at, uh, that, out at yeah. Oakmont. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I just think that w what what you're seeing here is, is really... Ian Cole, what, what, what we're ready, we're ready. makes yeah, we're it special good. because they they sign autographs, they shake hands, they take pictures, they interact with is, these is fans normal? who have been there in some cases for five, six hours. Right. Let's take it out of spot. It's sure. different. It's a different animal here because we, uh, it's just the values in the, of this town make it different here. I really think we have a different relationship with our teams. No nope. It's got to be an anomaly, though, for everybody on the team, though, to be the same way about things. You know what I mean? Well, I think Usually it's a player or two or, you know, the this fan is the whole team. They're all players, on the same page. I think they come yeah. together in that way. The, 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 the fans are different and, and, the, and the players learn that things are different yeah. here. Um, and you, you have a well, look at that. I mean, that's just a <laughs> Carl Hagelin taking it. Fastest guy in the NHL. Nice. Yeah. He's probably doing the quickest work. There he goes. I think, this, I think this is a, a more satisfying part of the parade than than the, the floats or the cars sure. coming by. Because you don't need any of that. They, they're up close slapping fives. Which I mean, that's part. great. Best part. Okay, we're going to send things over to Jennifer Tomasic real quick. She is down there. That's uh, look at Matt Murray. High-fiving. Jennifer, what's happening? Wait, it's been the camera around because we're so excited that Patrick Horn just, just came past us and obviously all the fans are super excited. That's the reason that we won the Stanley Cup final game. He scored that game winning goal and against his old team. So we've been seeing a lot of the players finally coming down here. Carl Hagelin was just down here as well. Uh, Patrick Hornquist. I've been looking at the list to see who's coming up next. It looks like back behind us we have, let me see. We have Brian Dumoulin coming down and Brian Rust. The Bryans are heading now our direction. Uh, it's been really cool because some of the players have been getting off of the trucks. You can hear the cheers out here. Brian Dumoulin, Brian Rust. Two key defensemen. And I want to mention something really sweet. The last time that we saw you, we were talking with Kirsten. Um, and when Mark Strike was down here, he was signing some autographs. He went right over to Kirsten's sign, and he signed that for her. So we're hoping that maybe some of the other players will get off the truck. But this feeling is electric down here. It's so great to finally be. Aren't you guys so excited the players are finally coming? <laughs> Yeah, so we'll send things back over to you guys now. Oh, we can feel the enthusiasm. How exciting for everyone who's down there. And they still have their playoff when you're beers. right on the, they're right <laughs> next oh, yeah. to the street. They're they, on top of they it. They were there at they're 5 a.m., I'll yeah. bet. Yeah, we were talking, I was talking with somebody earlier this week about, do you think they're going to shave the playoff beard? Some did, some haven't, but I see a lot of beards. A lot of it. Benino loves that beard. I didn't know if there was some kind of superstition, like yeah. you had to wait until, until. the parade was <laughs> over, or whatever. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes Joe grows a playoff beard from the morning news <laughs> yeah. until the noon. Yes, that'll happen sometimes. You know, yeah. But that's just because that's the kind of that's guy Joe. he is. That's, yeah. that's, that's what I do. That's what he does, right. <laughs> All right, we are getting closer to a lot of noise. Trust me on this one. It's going to get loud down there. It already is, obviously. But, um... Well, Brian, the Bryans, as Jennifer mm -hmm. called them, were in uh, parade p position. They were in number 48. 48. So still got to get to uh, yeah. Sydney. We've yeah, got to go on down so, to 70-something. Huh? Yeah. Well, I... Uh... 
I think that the fans will uh, feel that it's well worth the time spent in the hot sun and the oh, humidity. Yeah. Uh, just put on that Scott Wilson S SPF 140. 140? Is it a 140 and, uh, day, Stephanie? <laughs> in, in, enjoy. Uh, Enjoy everything about it because yeah. the, the, the Stanley Cup may be at the rear of the parade, but everything else in front of it yeah. Yeah, good is, stuff. is a great build-up. They're yeah. riling up the crowd. Let's check out the crowd from up above here. We've got Damani Lewis flying around up there in Chopper 11. How does it look? How does the, the face of this city look today, Damani? Joe, just unbelievable up here from Chopper 11. You can just take a look here at the huge crowd that we have here right at, uh, at the point. Just a number of people out there excited. You know, you guys mentioned this being the People's Cup. And uh, just from Chopper 11, you can see the smiles even all the way up from here. And when uh, Sidney Crosby got out and started taking that cup along Boulevard of the Allies and just walking it and people getting a chance to just to touch it, to take a picture next to it. Uh, this is truly, I guess, the People's Day. Uh, long time pin supporters, pin fans, and, and from up above, you can see the pictures here. It's just unbelievable, just the sea of people who have come out to just get a glimpse of the cup, get a glimpse of their favorite players. You got to keep in mind, some of these people may not have even been to a hockey game this year, but they've been watching this team on television every single game, and now they're just coming out here to show their support to this team, to this team that they love, that they've been following for God knows how many years, but uh, you can just see the support now just overflowing here into Point State Park. It's been truly unbelievable, and uh, these crowds here continue to grow, guys, and it was a great idea to have uh, this stage put in Point State Park so more and more people can get a chance to just experience this and witness history and just soak all of this in, and the number of people are, you can just see from up above here getting those cameras out, guys, snapping pictures of the cup, snapping pictures of their favorite players. Uh, I hope they have some battery chargers for that for those cameras out there because uh, they're going to need it because this parade is looks like it's going to be uh, going on for quite some time. Uh, as Come you on. mentioned, Peggy, they're only on number 48. Yeah. But uh, this parade is just going on and it's uh, it's just a quite the scene from uh, Chopper 11. Have you actually been able to see that crowd kind of slowly moving in the direction of Point State Park? You can see them slowly starting to file into a Point State Park, uh, but people really are trying to get a shot of that uh, Stanley Cup. And I know Sidney Crosby has it, has it right now, so they're waiting for that cup to come past them. But once it comes past them, you see people slowly trying to make their way over to Point State Park. All right, well, thanks Peggy. for the bird's eye view, Damani. We appreciate it. We're a little jealous. You've got the coolest Oh, it's beautiful spot up here. House. <laughs> it is beautiful up here, Peggy. All right, thanks, Devonnie Lewis. I'd love, to, I'd love to see a parade from Chopper 11. What a, what a view hey, it must be. Benino just hopped out, and I mean literally hopped <laughs> one foot. <laughs> Amazing. He's on a broken leg, basically, right now. He's they walking on a, yeah, uh, not only does he have a boot on. They no, boot. They booted Well, well last night, and he doesn't have it on today, okay, but last yes. night he had like a crutch. Uh, walking crutch almost. Oh, is that? Okay. Uh, now now he's just done regular crutches, but you can see his left broken tibia. Um, amazingly, played the second and third period of game two <laughs> with that injury. Try, wonder, missed game you know, three, tried to play game four. what surgeon yeah. thinks about that. That didn't do any long-term <laughs> damage, right? I mean, he's, no, uh, he's fine. I, I, I think that... Well, it can't uh, be good. I think that uh, I don't have my orthopedics degree Hat on. <laughs> or license <laughs> but, uh, I can you know everything I can tell you this though uh, he didn't feel one bit of pain when no. he was out skating with the cup uh, after <laughs> yeah. game six exactly Matt Murray Look at this. posing selfie for some pictures again the first rookie technically a rookie yep first yep. rookie to win two Stanley Cups mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that'll be a trivia question for years to come yeah I hope they're giving out water down there because with, his, yes uh, I see that I mean, you American can just flag. <laughs> tell how hot it is yeah oh this little guy remember him from last year we brought yeah. him up on the stage last year he uh, looks Catherine. bigger now he's bigger now he was yeah. in a similar outfit it was adorable I forget his name 
I wish I remember that little guy's name. But you need to be better so with cute. names, uh, Joe. Yeah, I know, Mike. It's it's tough. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> I mean, <it's>, uh, <laughs> well, there's Crosby and Malkin jerseys. I think these folks are looking at the stage. They're getting ready. I think they Maybe might be right? getting ready, right? Great shot of Nick Benino, and I, I think that uh, everybody appreciates his willingness to not only take one for the team. There's. Phil the Thrill. Yep. <laughs> he's got, you know, he's got to be so used to this. What does he have? Does he have three cups? Play, playoff beard. How many cups does One, he have? Two since oh, he's come to Pittsburgh. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, before that, no, no. Okay. So two. That's pretty good. But he's, uh, you know, he's a, uh, you know, he's a fan favorite. Right. As is, hey, Connor Shearer. They're they're all awesome. fan favorites, awesome. but I, I think know. there are certain players that. I think really appreciate uh, the fans really appreciate. Okay, we're hearing introductions now. I'm not sure if that is coming from the stage. Oh, they're up there on the, some of the like penguins it. are up yes. there already. Yep. Oh, he's got some you know, champagne and beer. Champagne and beer. What the heck? It's hump day. <laughs> right. Yeah, of course, none of this at the stage on the field there uh, can start till Sydney brings that cup up there. And Wayne Dino, that's that's gonna sound. Well, that's when the party begins. By the way, they, the, the Penguins logo you see there, you saw Phil Kessel signing it. I think it's one of the great logos in, in, in all of sports. Beautiful. Really no, no, it really is. Uh, when the Penguins went away from that for a time. Yeah. So glad that they went back to the original. Classic. The skating Penguin is phenomenal. <laughs> A wonderful thing. Some people have to wait a long time. To get <laughs> There's a huge and catfish. <laughs> and there's a huge catch right yes, there. Right there. And we got it. Two years in a row. I wonder what part of uh, who, who will he be on now? Grant? Is this... I don't know if he's gone past. I'm sure that he's going to hop out when he gets to the area where the or Chase Williams is in the media, I hope. Oh, I think he already passed Chase, right? Did he? I believe so. Yeah, he passed Chase. Now he's letting the fans or, get up close <laughs> to the cup. You can it. see the barrier there that's making it difficult. Uh, fans, trust me, will do everything possible. To, what a great picture that is if you happen to be yeah. one of those fans up close I mean, and do personal. Do you touch it or take a picture of it? What do you do? <laughs> well, you know what? I think maybe you try to do both. Do both. <laughs> maybe you try to do both and take a selfie at the same time. Yeah. I uh, and Sid with Great. with some handlers around them there just to make sure that Sid and the cup are protected from the very well-meaning fans, but understandably uh, excited to get a glimpse at Lord Stanley's Cup and also at Sidney Crosby, the two-time Smythe, three-time Stanley Cup champion. Mac Cullen soaking it up, as we said earlier, 40 years old. Maybe he won't want to retire when he, <laughs> when he considers all the... got to be tough after one of these, right? One of these guys. I think the toughest thing... Or maybe it makes it easier well, it because does, right. you've had it. Right. Well, I think the toughest thing that an athlete faces, uh, or one of the toughest things, Stop is that transition uh, after retirement. Yeah. The decision to retire and the transition. Jerome Bettis was fortunate enough to win a, a, a Super Bowl, a Vince Lombardi Trophy Super Bowl, uh, and then retired, went off into the sunset. It happens sometimes. Peyton Manning, uh, but but maybe Peggy's right. Maybe you you win a couple and, and it makes it easier to go off. But at the same time, you want to hold on to all these great things that are happening in the moment. Absolutely. Mark Andre Fleury, flower, always with a smile on his face. <laughs> I love to talk about cars with Marc Andre Fleury. You know, many of these athletes <laughs> yeah, you talk yeah, about things other than Hako. Oh yeah, he he's a a sports car aficionado, and and uh, he'll ask me, did you were you out today enjoying this? And I said, well, if you let me out in your car, then I'll <laughs> I might enjoy this sunny day even more. These spring days when we get down there almost daily and yeah. see them in the playoffs, mm -hmm. um, just always. So happy to talk, you know, make conversation. 
We, we noticed the police thrill. officer in front here. He's literally holding his bike up in the air, <laughs> creating some crowd control. That's got to be a workout for that guy. I wow, thought he was holding his bike in the air. That's interesting. I love the cop. Oh, I like that method. <laughs> yeah. It's working, but it's definitely a workout for some of our finest today. What a thrill for these fans right along the railing there, getting a chance to touch the cop. You know, in, in, in presidential inauguration parades, they always, they, sometimes the Secret Service jumps to attention when they yeah. see a president get close to get, the, get yeah. close to the yeah. crowd like yeah. that or get out of the car. I, yeah. I think it's they don't like probably that. rare that they, they would like get that, that close, right. if ever. Right. But, but in some ways, it's the same thing. It's Crosby yeah. and, the, and, the, and the trophy, and they want to make sure they have a little wall around them. A little them. cocoon for them. The, the, the police yeah, are there absolutely. as well as handlers Great of the cup. Job. Yeah. Mark Andre Fleury has arrived. He's getting instructions there from a, a police officer or a crossing guard. I can't. I can't tell. <laughs> now he's back in the truck with his wife Veronica and uh, beautiful family. Mark Andre Fleury oh, has. Yes. <laughs> I love that local commercial he's in. Uh, where I he's do feeding too. the baby. Yeah. The more. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Is that Sheary we're looking at here? Connor Sheary. You know what he did just a minute ago? Somebody threw him a hat and a pen. He signed it and threw the pen and the hat back. Like, wow. The crowd. Good move there. Pretty, pretty sweet. There's his fiance uh, to the right of your screen there, his left. For a second, I thought Flurry was on that horse. <laughs> so I guess Flurry is back in the, uh, in the vehicle and uh, making yeah, his way close. closer. There's his wife on the far right of your screen. Yep. <laughs> Two mounted officers behind him. I love the Stanley Cup on the yeah. Old guy there. Front of that deal vehicle there. You, you see see the. Uh, well, we've switched to another shot, but I, I love the you know some of these cars are decorated and. In that case, there was a Stanley Cup. Many are watching the stream on WPXI.com as well. And we, uh, and we welcome them. Dr. Steve Gertner, my buddy, is out there. He told me they, they don't have a TV in the office, but they have us on anyway. So thanks to that. Thanks, Wherever you Doc. might be today, maybe you're at work. Yeah. Maybe you're at home watching on TV. Or I don't maybe think you're... anybody in Pittsburgh's at work today. I think no. they're all downtown. Hey, we're not getting much done today. I think a, a, a great deal of them are downtown. The only thing that make it better for us is if this were Friday. Although this is the same day as last week's last parade. Year. Not yeah, the same yeah. date. Right. Wednesday. It was, yeah. it was a Wednesday. They won on a Sunday. They won on a Sunday, now. June 12th, yep. and the parade was uh, June 15th, mm -hmm. three days later. And yep. then the U.S. Open began at Oakmont on June 16th. We were we were at o we were at Oakmont the next day. Yes. Yeah. From one to the other, yeah. it was seamless. What a last week year. of sports. You know? This year, they they won on June 11th, a Sunday. Right. And then uh, I missed it by one day. And now <laughs> here we are, June. Is it the 14th? Yes, the yeah. 14th. Okay, Crosby's uh, rounding the corner. He's coming close to uh, making that turn to the last trip. Ron Burkle on the left, Mario Lemieux on the right. Ron Burkle, the billionaire owner who has committed to this team in a profound way. Mario Lemieux. The, everybody knows the story of Mario and, and uh, part owner of the team now, and now on the cup five times, more than Ray Jackson. We're letting you hear these cheers as the Penguins are introduced at the end of the parade route, right by Point State Park in front of the hotel there. Hey, who said that for Nick? Raise your hand. All those people. These horses are very well behaved. <laughs> yeah, they are. You know, considering all the noise and the, you know, they can sometimes react a little funny around this kind of commotion, right? For that. Uh, yeah, sure. They, they are in control. Absolutely. I always have a job of marching behind the horses. <laughs> oh, uh, you were that guy? Yeah, that's that's me. <laughs> Mario Lemieux soaking it up. 
You got a Stanley Cup shirt on there. Mm -hmm. What a thrill to be able to drive yeah. the thrill. owners. Police on bicycle beside Mario, on motorcycle behind Mario. I saw Mario and his wife Natalie and uh, his extended uh, group that was with him when they won the cup as we were waiting to go on the ice uh, in Nashville uh, on the service level. Mario walked by in the final moments of the game or the, when the game had ended and uh, the, the, the look on his face, the, the look that he had just been part of a fifth Stanley Cup champion, Mike championship, Mike Sullivan. All right, uh, we're going to step away just for a second. Trust us, we'll be back very, very shortly for another look at the Cup and what's to come. We'll be right back. as we cheer on our champion, Pittsburgh Penguins. And our Jennifer Tomazic is right in the middle of a huge throng of people. Jennifer? And I was in the middle of a shower, a confetti shower, <laughs> which was just fantastic. Pyrotechnic is out here. They're doing the showers. I want you to come down. So we're going to come on down to you. We're on live on TV. So this is one of the lucky women who uh, actually got a couple of signatures today. Some of the uh, players have been awesome about just coming down and chatting with the fans. So who'd you got? Did I get? I got Round. She got Rowney and Hornquist. Quist. So is there anybody else that you're hoping for? Denny Malkin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, I heard you guys discussing because you didn't have one on your hat, but she did. So what happens? I'll just switch. She's my aunt. We'll, we'll figure it out. Get it. <laughs> They'll figure it out. How cool is it be, be, see, to have them actually getting off the trucks and, and interacting with the fans? They should get off the trucks and interact with the fans. That's what it should be. Awesome. All right. Well, so you've seen we're kind of in a little lull here, but... Have no fear. I know that there are some special players that are on their way down. We just had Mario pass us, and I was looking at the lineup, and there's still quite a few still to come. So we're going to toss things back over to you guys in the studio. All right, there's uh, Mr. Lemieux heading towards the stage right now, and Sidney Crosby is making his way awesome. right Thanks, around that corner you see right there where the Post Gazette sign is. And I he's can, close. Yeah, I could say this yeah. this crowd's going to erupt because it's a real narrow little strip there <laughs> in front of the hotel and leading up to the stage. Um, as we look at uh, Chris Letang there taking pictures, all these guys have been so great with the crowd, interacting so much. He and just took everybody. five selfies in about eight <laughs> seconds. And it's one of those where you hold the button down real quick and take 100 shots. Mario Lemieux and Ron Burkle were in car number 64, okay. and Sidney Crosby's in car number 70, so, so we don't close. have that far to go. That's we're great. Close. Crosby, oh. meet Mike. <laughs> the dog named Crosby. That's yes, great. Indeed. I'm sure there's a lot of pets named Crosby in this town. <laughs> I yes. think there might be a lot of children named Crosby. There might be. <laughs> and Stanley. Why not? A lot of Sydney. Stanley. Yep. Albie, Joe. Albie, yeah. Right. Oh, guys, I think you flatter yourself. <laughs> we try. We try. Oh, Actually, there we there's go. A, I think there's definitely a dog named after me. Somewhere. Is there a dog named? Yeah. <laughs> it's as good as I can get. Guys, it's getting closer to Point State Park, and boy, are things going to erupt. Yeah. When it gets into the park. Yeah, we, we've been saying it all, you know, for the last hour or hour and a half. Cro Sidney Crosby has really been given a chance, given a lot of folks a chance to touch that cup, and that's uh, that's good stuff. There he goes, hoisting it. I think they're going to make that right turn right now. The great thing about a parade is the tension of the game. That nerve-wracking atmosphere that was all over Pittsburgh. That's oh, gone. It's gone. Yeah. They can just, they just enjoy. enjoy. Just Absolutely. have fun. As much as you want to enjoy game sixes or game sevens, whatever it may be, sometimes it's too tense. Sure. Oh. And you, oh. And you, you don't enjoy it as watch. you could. Do you sit? I don't think anyone sits during those No, games. you stand up. You stand in, yeah. You pace. Ace. Yeah. That's the way you view things. Absolutely. Chris Letang. After taking all the, was that Chris Tank taking the selfies a few moments yeah. ago? He's uh -huh. back in the, back car, in the now. car now. Back in the truck. Yeah. They're really taking time to mm -hmm. really make the fans feel a part of this. Yeah. It's definitely a genuine experience uh, from these guys. 
This is a parade as only Pittsburgh can do it. <laughs> The street cleaners are going to be working overtime. <laughs> it'll be worth it. A lot of, uh, it'll be worth it for the memories that to clean up. <laughs> Prince of Wales trophy with yeah. Chris Kunitz. Mm -hmm. If you're just joining us, perhaps that's the Eastern Conference, the, the trophy that's awarded to the Eastern Conference champs. Chris Kunitz gets the honor of. So we got the three trophies, right? That. We got that, the heart, and the Stanley no, 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 Cup. no, the Conn Smythe, Conn Smythe, Conn Smythe, the right. Stanley Cup, right. and, uh, and 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 the uh, Prince of Wales trophy. Yeah. Conn Smythe given to the playoff MVP, Cindy Crosby, the third back-to-back -back winner of the Conn Smythe, wow. and now a three-time Stanley Cup champion. NHL uh, or NBC Sports Network aired a. Uh, a show called Game Changers, or I, I believe mm -hmm. I have the name right, with Sidney Crosby, Mario Lemieux, Bobby Orr, Wayne Gretzky, Jonathan Taves of the Blackhawks. Wow. And uh, amazing to see Sid's face looking at those other mm -hmm. multiple Stanley Cup winners and how, how excited he was to be part of that group. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now Sidney Crosby, a three-time champion. Better get that paper home and frame ASAP. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all the cameras, the, the phones taking pictures. Chris Kunitz, his daughter, the rest of his family, his wife Maureen. To the left there, tired kids in yellow. Well, the kids are tired. You notice that? <laughs> so the they're probably kids. hot yeah, and tired hot and, and cranky. a little awestruck. <laughs> yeah. Shell shocked. What maybe. a shock! Look at this as we pan out. Chopper 11 has been doing a great job providing mm -hmm. just the perspective and watching the crowd thicken and as, as it grows throughout the day here. And now Sidney Crosby <laughs> close to the stage here with the Stanley Cup. How thick it is. Yeah. It's Many people deep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great look right here. The parade got underway, what, 11 o'clock? About, yeah, right about 11 o'clock. So yeah. we're almost just 10 minutes shy of two hours into yeah. it, and they're still making their way toward Point State Park, yep. where the celebration will continue. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure the infield there where the uh, stage is has is, is got to be uh, packed. packed at this point. We, we, we oh, get it. Some. Look at how close the fans were able to get. I think that's mm -hmm. tremendous. Yeah. But it's, the, you know, the Stanley Cup really is different than any other you professional notice. trophy. Yeah. You know, you don't see. But look at the fans. They're just calmly looking at this piece of history right here. They're not well, freaking out. Or many anything. of them <laughs> may be taking pictures or yeah. maybe they're yeah, it's a special moment making a mental memory of the, the, yeah. the whole thing. But that's that's the money shot right there. When you look at the Pittsburgh police officers doing just a great yeah. job it's keeping tight. everything under yeah. control. Mm -hmm. It's a big crowd. Yeah. Okay, so Jennifer Tomazic, uh that's what she's been waiting cup, for. The <laughs> cup is on the way. You're getting, uh, getting a look at it, I bet. Do we have Jennifer, or is she, or has she just become a fan all of a sudden? <laughs> she might have her phone in the air <laughs> right now. Oh, there's Jennifer. There she is. Hi, guys. As you can see, we are now super close to the Stanley Cup and our own MVP, Sydney Crosby. We are getting as close as we can to it. We knew that he must be getting close because we have a lot of Pittsburgh police. There he is. Woo! You can just see how excited everyone is to be this close to the Stanley Cup and Sidney Crosby. He's surrounded by Pittsburgh police officers, but everybody's staying back. And being very respectful.
respectful and excited at the same time. Just look at his face. You can tell how appreciative he is of all these fans who came out to support the Pittsburgh Penguins today. Here's Hoiston again. So we are right back down the line. The Kant's Mike Trophy is also uh, back there. I don't know if you guys are still on us here, but boy, I'm like shaking because we were just that close <laughs> to the Stanley Cup. So I think this signifies that we are getting close to the end, uh, end of the parade here. So we'll send things back over to you guys. Oh, Jennifer, you're like an excited <laughs> <laughs> fan, and Love. aren't we all? <laughs> yeah, and look at that. That's the uh, infield there, and you can see the stage there. just to the left going back to Sid. Of course, this is the final leg of the trip for him in that cup this morning. What a great shot that is. Jennifer reacting the way Joe reacted when he saw the Beatles for the first time. <laughs> 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 got to check a lot of gentlemen. She's good. listening yeah, to us. She is. <laughs> yeah, that's a uh, that's a big thrill. Yeah. To to see the Stanley Cup goodbye, you. especially Jennifer was very close there. She was really right off the right left side of that there, truck yeah. as uh, Sid came by. Right, now Sid's right. getting off the truck and. Great shot on the right from Chopper 11. The front or back end of, of, of Point State Park, depending on your perspective, closest to the hotel. Also, the, the parade back in 91 was toward the fountain. It was towards the fountain. Oh, okay. It was, it was, this, this is back towards the hotel. Right. Way back in the day, it was deep into the point. Down over there. Yeah, yeah. At, the, at the actual point, almost. Right? Are you ready for the captain? Pass the echo bridge. <laughs> Your master of ceremonies. You know him as Paul Staggerwald. You're his friend. You call him Staggy. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan Mill. Good afternoon, Pittsburgh. We have a few words to say, but first of all, I'm going to bring up Jeff Jimerson to sing the national anthem. Today. And 
As I said in 2009, look at that back there, yeah! I said this is hockey heaven. That's pretty cool. That's the 9-11th Air Wing. Chanting, why don't we try this one? We won the cup again. We won the cup again. We won the cup again. Got to be able to hear it in Nashville, everybody. Let's go. Come on. We won the cup again. We won the cup again. Everybody, you know the Penguins organization is the gold standard. Best owners, best management, best coaches, best staff. Best players, Mario came here in 1984. He captured all of our imaginations. We had a very re realistic image of someday winning a Stanley Cup. Well, Mario led us to two cups in 91 and 92. And along with the amazingly brilliant Ron Burkle, Mario has been the owner for the last three. 66 is the common denominator. Five Stanley Cups in the Lemieux era. Five cups in 26 years. The only Pittsburgh franchise to win five titles in its first 50 years of existence. What a 50th anniversary season this has been. And we're still blessed to have the game's greatest player and the game's greatest leader, Sidney Crosby. And of course, the combination of Sid and Gino, arguably the most dynamic duo in hockey history. But the 2017 Cup run was most remarkable because it was a team effort. Capitalized, T-E-A-M. It took 25 guys, including two number one goalies, Flurry and Murray. Now that is without a doubt the best goalie tandem to ever backstop a cup champion. And all champions tend to overcome adversity along the way, but this band of brothers didn't just overcome adversity, they seem to thrive on it. Their ability to overcome injury, injuries individually and as a team will be what distinguishes them from the other four Penguins Cup winners before them. Now I know as Pittsburghers we're all proud of this special group of guys. I know I am. Are you proud of these guys, huh? Are they awesome? In the last 10 years, the Penguins have been to the conference finals five times, the Stanley Cup finals four times, and have won three cups. Quite a decade. And of course, they're the first to win back-to-back -back Stanley Cup titles in the NHL in 19 years. One of the slogans for this team is puck management. How about pain management? They did a phenomenal job of overcoming injuries and showing the grit and determination it takes to win consecutive Stanley Cups. Can you say dynasty? dynasty. Let me hear you say it. Let's say it. Dynasty. 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 Yeah, we've all truly gone to hockey heaven, folks. What a great day this is. Take a look around. Soak it in. It's an amazing day here in the city of Pittsburgh, the best hockey town in the world. And right now, I'd like to introduce... Let's bring up the president of the Pittsburgh Penguins, David Morehouse. Thanks, Staggy. Great day for hockey, isn't it? We heard a lot about the Nashville fans, and they have some good fans in Nashville. But look at the Pittsburgh fans. Let's hear it for the Pittsburgh fans. Staggy talked about it, but I want to talk about it a little more. Ron Burkle and Mario Lemieux, the best ownership group in sports, they've given us everything, we've, everything we need to win. Anytime we ask for something that's going to make the team better, or make it better for our players, they've said yes, and they do it time and time again. I also want to thank the best general manager in sports, Jim Rutherford. Who, when, 
When we talked to Jim about coming to Pittsburgh, he said, I think we can win a few cups. I didn't know he'd do two in three years. And we also have the best coach in, in, in hockey, if not in all of sports. He's such a good coach that a year ago, he told 400,000 of you that we'd be back and three times as many showed up. And we do have the best players, not only on the ice, but off the ice. The character of these guys, the resilience of them, the work they do in the community, it's unprecedented. We're very fortunate to have these types of players in Pittsburgh. And we're very fortunate to have been able to watch them on, a, on an outstanding playoff run to the second consecutive Stanley Cup. I'd also, want me to introduce the coach or are you going to come back? I'd like to introduce Coach Sullivan, the best coach in the NHL. Thanks, David. What can we say about this group of hockey players here? I just think there isn't a group I've been around that knows how to win more than these guys. Let's give them a round of applause. These, these guys are fierce competitors, and they just know how to win. They, they just find ways to get it done. We couldn't be more proud of them. On behalf of the team, we just want to thank you guys. We think we've got a unique fan base. You know, everybody talked about Nashville through those finals, but they've got nothing on Pittsburgh, I'll tell you that. Now fans believe that. We'd, we'd also like to take the opportunity to, the, on behalf of the players and the coaches to thank our ownership, Ron Burkle and Mario Lemieux, for just giving us everything we need to have success on the ice. And lastly, I, I, I know I speak for all of us up here when I say that we thank you guys from the bottom of our heart for all the support that we get all throughout the course of this year. This team's been through a lot, and you guys have been there every step of the way. And, uh, you know, I, I, I said a little something last year, and seeing if we could, uh, we could do this again, I, I wonder if we could repeat, or three-peat, should I say. Thank you very much. Pete, three Pete, three Pete, three Pete, yeah. Let's bring up the captain of the Pittsburgh Penguins, Sidney Crosby. Sid has something he wants to show you. So, Sid, what do you have to say to the fans right now as you look out there at this incredible sight? Just uh, thanks very much. Look at this. Look at this scene. This is, you know, this is what it's all about. Um, we worked all year to get to this point. Um, thank you so much for your support. We couldn't do it without you. Uh, that game five is something I think we'll all remember. So, uh, thanks for all your support. Thanks for showing up today. And uh, let's try to do this again next year. Thank you. Sid, you've been an inspiration to your teammates as a captain and the leader, but could you talk about how they've inspired you and some guys maybe who've really kind of pushed you uh, when you're out there on the ice? Well, yeah, I think all of them, but I think you look at what we went through this year with all the injuries, I think it was 34 guys who played on our team this year on our roster. So uh, it was truly a team effort. Uh, I'm so proud to be part of this group, and uh, it was obviously special to be able to go back-to-back. -back. We all knew how tough that was going to be, but... It's an amazing group of guys, and uh, it's great to be able to share this with all of you. So thank you very much. Sidney Crosby, everybody! He's the first guy to win back-to-back Conn Smythe trophies as the MVP of the Stanley Cup playoffs since Mario Lemieux did it in 91 and 92. That's pretty fitting. And two guys who've been here for all five Cups, five Stanley Cups, Mike Lang and Phil Bork. Yeah. You want a second, Mike? Yeah. Y'all 
know what time it is, don't you? Yeah. Because when the two Niners shows up, it is a special time. However, you can slap me silly, Sydney, for the job that you did and the players on this team. You made this city proud. You made everybody in hockey proud of what you guys accomplished. And we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you, guys. Yeah. I told this little story to Borky uh, just after we won the cup the second time here. And what you go back to last year when the Penguins basically broke every goaltender in, this, in the series that they played, they did the same thing, I believe, this year too. And so they made the goalies feel like a cow on AstroTurf. And that's not a fun thing for a cow. But for the Penguins, it was a wonderful thing. And thus, they've got another Stanley Cup, number five. And it's that time. It's time to christen the USS Bork and get the party started for the whole city on the river. Will you please, Mr. Bork, give us the christening? Uh, you remember 1991? It was actually you, Mikey. You prodded me. You said, Borky, give him something to remember you by. And we started a little tradition. So you want to keep the tradition going? Yeah. Okay. Everybody remember how it goes? So I start it, and you guys finish it, all right? He can still lift it up. Yes, sir. Yeah. Let's take this down to the river. And here's the beauty of this whole thing, is that every year the Penguins win a cup, we know that Elvis is still alive. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a special moment here, this parade and everything involved? How wonderful it was. We seem to be so much closer to people uh, this year and the years prior. But it was hot. Everybody agree to that? Yeah. But one, players have to improvise sometimes too, and sometimes they overdress. And so they've got to take care of some things. I wonder, and I know I'm not putting you in a bad position here, but would you step forward, Mr. Hainsey, just for a moment? <laughs> Come on, Ronnie, have some fun with it. Come on. I want you to see how you get a pair of shorts out of a jean that has it. And here's how it's done. Thank you, Mr. Hainsey. Awesome job. Yeah. That's being able to improvise. Hide those babies. All right, Staggy, we'll send it back to you, and you can finish up here. <laughs> okay, we're going to bring a couple more guys up here, a couple guys that played a um, pretty big role, I'd say, in winning the Stanley Cup. We're going to bring up, we're going to bring up the greatest goaltending tandem in the history of the Stanley Cup playoffs, Mark Andre Fleury and Matt Murray. Come on up here, guys. Come on, Flower. Grab the cup, please. Would you grab the cup? You two hold it up. I appreciate it. Right over here, Flower. Put it between you two guys. Both of you guys hold it up. That'd be great. Okay, now we're going to do a chant. We're going to go, Murray, Flurry, Murray, Flurry. Back and forth. Okay, here we go. Murray. Awesome. Gotta go, guys. Thanks a lot. Congratulations. Okay, I'm gonna ask the guys if they would, because they're kind of in the back here on the stage. I want them to sort of come up to the front so all of you can see them here for one last time before we end the program. So, boys, if you wouldn't mind, come up to the edge of the stage here so they can see you because you're pretty far back. And there's so many people out here, we want to do that, okay? Come on, guys. Come on, come on, come on. Just come out to the edge of the stage. I'd appreciate it. Gino, come on. Come on, guys. Appreciate it. Give these one more look at the 2017 Stanley Cup champions, back-to-back -back champs.
There you go. Let's hear it, folks. Let's hear it for them. Come on. Give them a good send-off for the summer. Everybody. Gino. Have a great summer, everybody. And uh, let's do it again. We'll see you at the banner raising in early October. Thank you so much. This crowd was eating up every minute of that. And as you heard, they fully intend to be back here again for a three-peat next June. They're about 100 deep. And I do have to say, we want to thank the uh, first responders for helping all these people out because we did have a few uh, heat situations with wheelchairs and everything. We needed to get some people out to safety because it was packed in like sardines. So thank you to everybody who helped. And as you saw there, we had the Murray Flurry chant. It was crazy. The music is kicking back up. I'm not sure. People are heading down to the uh, water. So so maybe they're releasing the catfish next. Not sure, but we'll keep an eye on that. Right now, we want to send things back down into the crowds of Jennifer Tomasic. Jen. Catherine, you're all about this catfish. I love the catfish. <laughs> I learned how to I toss know, one. I know, you to go back <laughs> into the river. Well, you know what? We took this party down to the river. We are going to now party all summer long, just like the old two Niners said. And what an incredible day. It was so great seeing all of the fans out here to support the Pittsburgh Penguins. And it was just so great to see them all up close. And you could tell how much they appreciate all of the support that we have here. The city was booming with Pittsburgh pride today, especially for the Penguins. Um, it was really interesting that they brought a couple of the players up there to get kind of, you know, thank the fans individually. Uh, you had Murray and Flurry chant up there as well, and Crosby had a chance to address the fans as well as Coach Mike Sullivan. So, uh, so glad to be a part of this. It looks like everybody's kind of filing out now. We are just back behind the stage, uh, and so we are going to now send things back over to you guys in the studio. All right, thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Catherine. Chase, Williams, Damani, Lewis up in Chopper 11 today. What a day, and what a view right there. That is Point State Park still rocking and reeling after two years in a row of winning a Stanley Cup. And uh, just great hearing from a lot of those players up there on the stage. Yeah, and such a memorable day mm -hmm. in the city of Pittsburgh. Such a great day to celebrate our great Pittsburgh Penguins. And we at Channel 11 were just so happy to be able to bring it to you live. It was a whole lot of fun. And congratulations to the Penguins, right, Albie? Great season. Unbelievable season and a remarkable postseason. And they were playing Walking on Sunshine down at Point State Park, <laughs> uh, a song that's become very familiar in the Penguins locker room after games. Uh, this is uh, sports history playing out right in front of you. Five Stanley Cups and back to back for the Penguins for the second time. It's a great, great day to see the fans and the players come together and celebrate. And Mike Sullivan said, Three P. He did I say I that. He said he did. I heard him. I heard him. That sounds like a perfectly, uh, perfectly reasonable thing to think about. But let's just take off the month of July, and we'll start <laughs> worrying about that. They in don't due get time. much time off, right? I no, mean, they don't. And they well, play a lot of. They play. A, they play hockey throughout. Well, the year, when, you, don't they? when you play late into the Stanley Cup uh, uh, playoffs yeah, and the finals right. takes you to the middle of, of June. Uh, that means that you, by the time you, the dust settles from the championship, if you're lucky enough to win it, it's almost July. Yeah. You have July and you have August. You start thinking about hockey uh, as they get to September. And that's the other thing. They're all going to get their moment with the cup. They'll go to their hometowns, to their native countries, and they'll, uh, they'll celebrate uh, the blood, sweat, and tears that it took to win that Stanley Cup. It's the oldest professional trophy in North America, and uh, I think uh, it has a greater connection to these players who grew up uh, in awe of winning it, and they've now done it in, for some of them back-to-back -back years, and uh, for some of them, a third time. Enjoy the cup, uh, even though it seems like it comes around every year. We're spoiled, uh, for sure. Yeah, Pittsburgh fans are certainly, uh, have you had their taste of great championships? Five-time champions, back-to-back. -back. Yeah. Enjoy the summer. Yeah, not, uh, not a bad way to start the summer, that's for sure. Summer officially starts next week, and the celebration started today, and it's going to happen uh, throughout the day here. You can imagine uh, a lot of these folks took the day off, and they're going to enjoy uh, the good weather we've been having. And uh, and uh, I, I, I'm assuming at this point we've released the 40-pound catfish into the, <laughs> into the river. That at this point. Did. Hopefully that it. has happened. All right. Well, as everyone files home, we're also going to say adieu to you. And it was a great, was a great day. Really what a day. What a season. Go Pens.
All right, welcome back here inside the Sportsnet studio. That was the Penguins celebrating a Stanley Cup for a second straight year with their home crowd in Pittsburgh. Uh, right now, though, uh, that is all. They're going to get their names on the cup. We're going to send you to names on the cup here on Sportsnet. In just a, a little bit, but uh, first, though, this is why they have parades, and this is why so many people come out. The Pens have never been able to clinch the cup at home. That's their fifth Stanley Cup, and for the fifth time, they've won it on the road. So, of course, their fans saving all that energy for a parade like this to get their celebration in. Now, could they be celebrating next year? We heard Mike Sullivan talk about potentially three-peating. Of course, that's the goal of every NHL player, while the Pens, not surprisingly, are the favorites for the 2018 Stanley Cup as well at 9-1. to one. Uh, Edmonton, the highest Canadian team, Vegas, understandably, the lowest team at 150 to one. Uh, speaking of Vegas, they will be the center of the hockey world next week where the NHL awards go down on June 21st. At the same time during the awards, we'll find out the players who will make up the original roster of the Vegas Golden Knights when the expansion draft happens at the same time. Now, the NHL draft goes down on June 23rd in Chicago. Then it's all eyes on free agency. July 1st, of course, Canada Day starts that. All right. That will do it for us in here. Tim and Sid, of course, comes your way at 5 Eastern time. Uh, for all the latest, make sure you follow Sportsnet on Twitter at Sportsnet or visit Sportsnet.ca. Right now, we'll send you two names on the cop. Thanks very much for watching Pittsburgh Penguins Parade.